bound only by frozen one here they'll be looking forward to this one what do you think i think we're gonna win one now rachel Furness header at the back post you're even calling the goal score yeah. <laughs> it's a huge moment it is a huge occasion uh for the game here as well can you feel the vibe when you're talking to to friends and family at the minute about how big this is definitely and i know a lot of people that are over there as well and they're just really enjoying themselves and uh, everybody's buzzed about this match because obviously everyone knows that it's something that we can we can get something out of well, the teams are on their way at St Mary's. I think it's about time we handed you over to our colleagues on Five Live. Are named first on the team sheet, so they appear first 
into the sizzling sunshine on the south coast now in their bright red shirts, white shorts and red socks. A slow stride, 10 yards onto the pitch. They then turn behind the little mascots in their white shirts behind the UEFA banner and they will turn their backs to us. And here come Northern Ireland. And once again, Stephen Cragen, I mean, what a turnout. What a turnout from the Green and White Army. That actually looks busier and fuller, that stand opposite us, than it did last week. Yeah, I think sometimes you have to try and consider it's a Monday evening at five o'clock. So for these people to come to the game, the commitment they've shown, the players will certainly appreciate it. And we said ahead of Thursday night, if Northern Ireland can get the first goal or stay in the game, use the energy that the Northern Ireland fans bring. Hush descends around the stadium. Time for the national anthems ahead of Austria against Northern Ireland. Hugely proud moment for those Northern Ireland players. Your heart goes out certainly to Simone McGill, ruled out of the tournament with that knee injury here in the stadium today, but unable to take part. Let's get cracking then. Second set of games uh, in Group A here at Euro 2022. A very warm welcome, quite literally, to all our listeners on BBC Radio Ulster who join us for the commentary this afternoon. And if you want this commentary uh, alongside the TV pictures on BBC television, those are available via the BBC iPlayer uh, or via the BBC Sports website. So the two teams have shaken hands. They will go over for the team photos behind their national team flags, and we have a chance to run you through the two team lineup. So Kenny Shields has made four changes for Northern Ireland, uh, who lost to Norway 4 1 on Thursday night. Simone McGill, we've talked about, is out. Kirsty McGuinness replaces her. We're looking at a 3 5 2 here, really. Jackie Burns in goal. The three centre backs, one change there on the left hand side. Rebecca Holloway, who plays her club football over in the States for Racing Louisville. Uh, she comes in for the 21-year-old Kelsey Burrows. Uh, so Julie Nelson, goal scorer on Thursday night on the right side of that defence. Sarah McFadden, who skipped the side, started the game as captain on Thursday in the middle. Rebecca Holloway uh, on the left. Abby McGee, who was so impressive on Thursday, has been given a rest. Rebecca McKenna uh, of Lewis, so playing her club football uh, last season, just along the south coast from here. Uh, she is in as right wing back. Demi Vance, crucial player for Northern Ireland, wears number three as the left wing back, plays a club football for Rangers. Marissa Callahan starts a game, made a real difference when she came on at half-time on Thursday. Chloe McCarran alongside her in central midfield. And Natasha Dowie, Rachel Furness, sort of 
the most forward thinking of the midfield three, as Stephen was saying, a real job to do to link the play here with Lauren Wade and Kirsty McGuinness ahead of her in the attacking positions. Yeah, most definitely. And the way that they've put the picture there, she's going to be on the right wing, which I'm not too sure whether that would change during the game or not, because I would like to see her a little bit more central uh, in behind the front two, creating. She's got that vision. And I also want to see her getting in the box. I was hoping maybe she'd actually play more central, because then you've got Wade and McGuinness on the wing that can maybe get deliveries into her. But she's going to be key today. She really needs to step up. She's one of their most experienced players. Northern Ireland women move into a team huddle right in the middle of the sun-drenched pitch. Austria players just exchanging high fives and hugs ahead of the game. Three changes for them from the 1-0 defeat against England. They have had an extra day's rest as that was the opening game of the tournament last Wednesday. Change it right back. Katarina Schichtel of Werder Bremen comes in for Arsenal's Laura Wienreuter. A bit of pace on the right-hand side. Julia Hickelsberger fuller uh, replaces Laura Feiertzinger and Marie-Theresa Herbinger uh, is in for Naschenweng. Katarina Naschenweng, another one to miss out. Arsenal's goalkeeper Manuela Zinsberger in goal. Katarina Schichtel at right back. Verena Hanshaw, who was in the team of the tournament at Euro 2017 at left back. Very experienced centre-back pairing of Karina Venninger and Vicky Schnaderbeck, who finished last season on loan at Tottenham. We've had the countdown to the kickoff there. Sarah Puntigam, most capped Austrian international woman footballer in the holding midfield role. The whistle blows, the Austrian players take the knee. That is applauded. Second whistle blows and we are underway. And Marissa Callahan swings the ball out with her left foot away to the right-hand side and the ball goes out for an Austrian throw. Sarah Zadrazil, we've got to watch. Playmaker from Bayern Munich uh, alongside Marie-Theresa Herbinger in central midfield. Hickelsberger Fuller wide on the right. Barbara Dunst, uh, another danger player. Northern Ireland know all about her from recent games. She's wide on the left. And Nicole Biller, goal scorer supreme uh, as the starting centre forward. Stephen Cragen, uh, we are underway. Austria take their throw inside their half. Early header won by Sarah McFadden. Uh, there is Rachel Furness, first time ball with her left foot. And Kirsty McGuinness just got away from her. Northern Ireland concede the first free kick. Free kick to Austria just inside uh, their own half. What, what, what do you make of the lineup then, Stephen? Well, uh, I'm just trying to piece it together. I think Demi Van Sachs is going to play as a left central defender and Rebecca Holloway will play left wing back. Marissa Callaghan looks as if she's going to play as the false nine because Lauren Way is playing on the right hand side. Kirsty McGuinness is playing on the left hand side. So in possession, Marissa Callaghan will try and be the number nine, be the centre forward out of it. She will drop back in. So effectively, Northern Ireland playing without an out and out centre forward. Okay, something slightly different uh, for Austria and their head coach, Irena Furman to think about. Austria have the ball here and it's Vicky Schnaderbeck, the skipper with a right-footed ball forward from the halfway line. It's slightly overhit and the ball bounces away and goes behind for the goal kick. So minute in, just over at St Mary's Stadium. Double header on five live and BBC Sounds this afternoon and this evening. England-Norway should be a cracker. Kicks off at eight o'clock at the Amex. Vicky Sparks, Stephen Warnock and Karen Barnsley, your commentary team for that one. Austria nil. Northern Ireland nil, Norway top of the group on goal difference on three points, England also on three points, Austria and Northern Ireland yet to get off the mark after those opening game defeats. McFadden's header away, drops just inside the Northern Ireland half, here's Zadrazil, first time ball with her right foot is uh, cut out initially but Austria have it back, bit of pace down the left hand side from Hanshaw, tries to whip in a first time cross with her left foot, doesn't quite get it right and behind it goes for the goal kick to Northern uh, Ireland. And what was notable, Northern Ireland's first goal kick went long. You know, we have not been critical, but we've spoken about them playing short. Here they are now with their second goal kick, and they're going to try and take it short. So I would just like to have seen them for the first 10, 15 minutes, try and play the game in the Austrian half, rather than trying to invite pressure. Austria ready and waiting. They close in quickly. Jackie Burns, the goalkeeper, plays it out to the right-hand side. Rebecca McKenna is under pressure. She's been bumped into touch, conceded the throw. Austria take that quickly. Nicole Biller... Uh, wearing a thin headband tied tightly around her head, hair tied in a bun, sitting right on top of her head. Challenges for the ball, it goes out for an Austrian throw. Hanshaw takes it quickly, so Austria going quickly from the restarts at the start of this game. 
Coming up to three minutes played. Five live BBC sounds. BBC Ulster this afternoon as well. Austria nil, Northern Ireland nil. Hanshaw's ball in. McFadden diving header away. Callahan takes a touch. Under pressure. McFadden's there again. Clears with her right foot. The ball is loose inside the centre circle. Schnatterbeck is the first to react for Austria. And Northern Ireland will stand off her. So she's got time to roll a pass to her centre-back partner. Karina Venninger slides the ball forward down the inside right channel. Breaks loose into midfield. Danger for Northern Ireland early on. That shot from the edge of the box came from Herbinger. Was well blocked. Furness with her left foot tries to get McGuinness away down the left-hand side. That's very easily cut out by Schichtel, who's a, a tall, imposing figure at right back. And Austria recycled the ball. And Venninger, 10 yards inside the Northern Ireland half, floats one up high. Biller will chase it. McFadden heads it away. Nodded down by McCarron on the edge of the area. Demi Vance jumps in. High challenge on her. That'll be a free kick for Northern Ireland. Early thoughts from Natasha Dowie. Yeah, well, you can definitely see a completely different mindset right now for Northern Ireland, which I don't think is such a bad thing. OK, they're looking right now defensively tight. It's a 5-4-1. They've got like a medium to deep block. They're saying to Austria, right, come and break us down. We want to build into this game, which I think is very smart. The weather, the way that the game panned out against Norway the other day. So I like that. I like the tactics behind that. I just need to, they need to be careful that they don't invite pressure for too long because Austria are a very good team. Yeah, Austria has seen a, a lot of the ball in the opening stages of the game. That's no great surprise. Northern Ireland with half an opportunity here to put some pressure on Austria, but they've Lost it further forward. That was Lauren Wade's first touch of the game. A twist and a turn here from Hicklesberger Fuller. She's got real pace down that right-hand side. Chased hard by the Northern Ireland player. Stopped in her tracks and she has to play back to Venninger. But every single Austrian outfield player inside the Northern Ireland half. Bouncing ball into the edge of the Northern Ireland box. McFadden swings a left leg at it. Good meaty clearance. Falls to Herbinger on the right, and Herbinger goes down. She was being challenged by Kirsty McGuinness. McGuinness is furious that the free kick's been given against her, but it's a free kick in a, in a dangerous attacking position for Austria. It's the one thing you wouldn't say about Kirsty McGuinness, that she's aggressive and she's physically strong and powerful using her body. I think it's quite a soft free kick to give away. However, that has to be put to the side. They've now got to make sure they defend this set play. They're a tall side, no doubt about it. But Venninger and Schnatterback in particular coming up from the back. McFadden and Julie Nelson have to make sure they defend properly and organise. Tash Dowie's expression on my left-hand side very much said, I'm not having that as a decision from the referee. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the referee in, in just a second. Interesting story there. She's making some instructions before the free kick is taken. Jackie Burns comes a long way off her line. Good catch with both hands. We saw plenty of that against Norway, actually. Confident goalkeeping, coming for the crosses and dealing with them well. Left-footed clearance downfield is hooked away. The ball drops just inside the Northern Ireland half. Forward ball down the inside right channel from Schichtel. Doesn't find a teammate. And through it goes to Jackie Burns, who stops that from going out for a goal kick and takes control of the ball inside her box. So our referee and refereeing team on the field this evening come from Venezuela. Emicar Caldera Barrera is the referee's name. It's part of an exchange program that UEFA uh, are doing uh, with... Um, South America, so a European referee this summer will referee as one of the referees at the Copper America Feminine. So we have a Venezuelan referee for this game between Austria and Northern Ireland this afternoon. Schnatterbeck inside her own half for Austria. Austria nil, Northern Ireland nil. Chasing there from Marissa Callahan, captain's armband wrapped around her left bicep. Calm from the goalkeeper, Manuela Zinsberg. We've seen plenty of her in the WSL for Arsenal. She's barking instructions from the edge of her box. Austria don't need her. Here's Sarah Puntigam. Digs her left foot underneath the ball. Lovely distribution there down the left-hand side. Little cut back here from Dunst. Cross comes in to the far post and the header goes across the face of goal. And behind for a goal kick to Northern Ireland. And that's Stephen Craig. The first real chance of the game. Yeah, it is. Northern Ireland get caught a little bit in between. Marissa Callum was trying to press the two central defenders. She get caught on her own. They're simply rolling the ball into midfield, switching the play. The problem in Northern Ireland's back three is, Ali, they're only marking one player. So there's an overload somewhere else in the pitch, and that's where they're getting punished. One of the central uh, defenders has to either step in the midfield to try and make up numbers, or one of the wing-backs has to step forward. But certainly an early warning sign for Northern Ireland. Jackie Burns clears with her left foot, so Northern Ireland went short from the goal kick there, and then it was played back to Jackie Burns. She's immediately under pressure, and the ball's gone out of play for an Austrian throw on the right. Austria nil, Northern Ireland nil. Former Northern Ireland international Stephen Craig and you just heard from former England international Natasha Dowie 
uh, with us again. We're keeping Tash busy. She'll be commentating on Germany, Spain tomorrow night. Stephen as well will be back here on Friday for the big one. It'll be packed in here for England against Northern Ireland, which will be the final group games for all the nations in this group. Group A, Schnatterbeck to Dunst. Northern Ireland got to keep a real keen eye on her. Tries to slip one down the left-hand side to Hanshaw. Northern Ireland have dealt with that. Lauren Wade trying to use her speed now to get away down the right-hand side. Zadrazil is chasing. Lauren Wade taking her on on the outside. Zadrazil slides it. Well, she's caught her there, surely. No, no free kick given. Good battle between the two. And back it comes to Zinsberger. I think that's one thing that maybe Wade needs to work on. Her pace, and I love her positivity. But if she can just get her body across the defender there, take her touch across her, she's through, and then the girl has to foul her. She's really side by side there, and has been kind of muscled off the ball there. So just use her body a little bit better there, because she's got the beating of her pace-wise. I think she needs to be more streetwise. I think there was possibly two occasions she could have been down for a free kick, but she's too honest in trying to stay up, whereas you'll see the Austrians, and particularly Norway the other night, any kind of bodily contact down for a free kick. So, don't be as honest. Vicky Schnatterbeck on the ball for Austria. Thought about going left. Sees a bit of space to her right-hand side. Poor pass from her this time. And here come Northern Ireland. Furness with the interception. Now Kirsty McGuinness. You can hear the green and white army getting stuck in as McGuinness on the dribble into the Austrian penalty area. Can't quite find the pass. Play breaks down. Here come Austria. Schichtel. Plays it to her right-hand side. Hickelsberger Fuller's got pace. Into the Northern Ireland half she goes, bouncing off the challenges, riding through them, slides a pass to the right-hand side. Biller's through on goal, gets the shot in, finds the side netting, and behind it goes for a goal kick to Northern Ireland. Great run from Hicklesberger Fuller, and Biller couldn't quite find the finish. Well, she's got good pace, hasn't she? Hicklesberger Fuller, she came on against England the other night and she caught the eye. Good ball carrier. I think Northern Ireland possibly have to try and engage a little bit earlier. If it means giving away a free kick and allowing your players to regroup, but in the end then, that one reverse pass takes out the full back three. That's where they've got to be careful, Northern Ireland. Don't get attracted to the ball, but you've got to make sure you pick up the runners. And Billa will probably face she should have scored. Yeah, I was just about to say, I can't believe it's not 1-0. You'd put That's what she's been waiting for. You know, she didn't get any opportunities against England. She is a prolific goal scorer. You have to go across goal there and at least make the keeper make a save. Rebecca Holloway off the field at the moment for Northern Ireland, having something attended to. So they're down to, to 10 at the moment. Kirsty McGuinness under pressure inside her own half. Herbinger applying that pressure. Northern Ireland have given the ball away. Schickel gets it forward. Now Puntigan, the holding midfielder, but further forward here. Looking good on the ball, Austria, in the early stages. Pace from Hicklesberger Fuller again. Little cut back in here to Zadrazil. Couldn't control it. Cleared away by Lauren Wade. Every Northern Ireland player behind the ball. Rebecca Holloway waiting to get back on and into the action. Cross comes into that Northern Ireland penalty area. Biller tries to chest it down. It might break for her. Ball's loose inside the box. Julie Nelson is there. Deals with it well. Clears with her right foot and it goes out for a throw into Austria on the left. Just a little bit of recognition that Rebecca Holloway's off the pitch. They're still taking a short goal kick and inviting pressure. They've only got 10 players. Put the ball as far away from your goal as you can. Play for second balls further up the pitch. Just game recognition where Jackie Burns has to understand that. 43 international goals for Nicole Biller, the centre forward. The target for her, the famous Nina Berger, top scorer for her country with 52. So she's only nine behind her at the moment. Sarah McFadden steps in and intercepts and then plays a wonderful searching pass to the right to release Lauren Wade. Now her teammates are going to try and get forward and help her. Wade's going to shoot from range with her left foot. Zinsberger easily has it covered. It was on target, but it didn't have much power to trouble Zinsberger. Yeah, going on to her stronger foot. It's great play by her. She's got her 1v1, which is where you want to see Wade. Cut inside. I'd actually say go more. You know, commit a player more. I think you're not really going to score from that type of distance against, you know, Arsenal's number one keeper. So can she look to commit the player a bit more? But brilliant play, positive play by Wade. Austria nil, Northern Ireland nil. Just over 12 minutes gone at St Mary's Stadium. England against Norway in full on five live and BBC Sounds this evening. That one kicks off at uh, eight o'clock. And all the, uh, the reaction, the debate, analysis, as it will be throughout the tournament via the Daily Euros podcast uh, on the BBC uh, Sounds app. Floated ball to the left-hand side. Might fall to Dunst, dealt with by Rebecca McKenna in at right back. This afternoon for Northern Ireland, big shoes to fill there because Abby McGee put in an absolutely sensational performance on Thursday night. She's getting a rest this evening. So it's Rebecca McKenna, 21-year-old, in at right wing back. Zadrazil's found herself a little bit of space. Back to goal. Tackled by Julie Nelson. Dunst keeps it in play 
for Austria. Down the line to Hanshaw. Lauren Wade in with the challenge. Hanshaw blocks her clearance. And it goes out for a Northern Ireland throw in the right back position. This is a really obvious thing to say. This is a much better start than Northern Ireland made last week, Steve. Absolutely. You know, what they aren't doing is, you know, they're not encouraging Austria to come and press them and put them under pressure. You know, Lauren Wade's had more of an impact in the opening 12, 13 minutes than she had probably in the first half last week. So quite clearly they've worked out she's the out ball. She's the ball carrier that can get them up the pitch. Uh, still, you know, I think they can complete their simple passes a little bit better. However, build as you go. You know, I said it ahead of the game. Stay in the game as long as you can. Stay in their coattails and then something can happen later in the game, Ali. Just seen a nice camera close-up on the Northern Ireland bench of a smiling Simone McGill. He would desperately love to be out there for Northern Ireland. Free kick given against Austria, edge of the Northern Ireland penalty area, so a chance to clear their line. So coming up to 14 minutes played, Austria nil, Northern Ireland nil, and Julie Nelson, who is standing just, just in the shade there. So there's about a third of the pitch down the right-hand side is Northern Ireland attack in the first half in shade, the rest of it all in sunshine. Long ball forward by Demi Vance with her left foot. Kirsty McGuinness will chase. Sinsberger a long way out of her penalty area. Clears with the right foot, turns into a good pass to Herbinger for Austria. Herbinger trying to release Hixelberger Fuller. Northern Ireland felt that might have gone out of play for a throw in assistant referee right on the spot, not interested. Here's Schichtel, Schichtel with her right foot. Pacey cross into the far post, runs beyond everyone. Dunst just caught on her heels there, couldn't quite get it in time, but here she is now wide on the left, swings the ball into the far post. McFadden is up, highest for Northern Ireland, heads it to her left-hand side, and Rebecca Holloway goes across to clear on the half volley with her left foot and quite happy just to give Northern Ireland a little bit of a breather for the time being. Austria nil, Northern Ireland nil. Austria come again with Puntigam. Puntigam to Villa. Pacey pass to Zadrazil. Quickly on to Dunst. Dunst onto her right foot. Shot scuffed and Jackie Burns is able to get down and make a very easy save. For Northern Ireland, Stephen Cragen. I'm just slightly concerned that Julie Nelson and Demi Vance, out of possession, aren't doing anything. Because Sarah McFadden is picking up Bela. So Julie Nelson's standing, not having anything to do. And there's a little bit of a problem in midfield. They're getting overrun, they're getting balls played, wide areas is an issue. So maybe Julie Nelson at times has to step into Dunst. She's got to go and pick her up and try and even the numbers up. Northern Ireland giving the ball away, playing inside their own half. They were trying to build up down the left-hand side. Cross coming in from Hicklesberger. Fuller might fall to Zadrazil. Burns read it quickly, off her line sharply, made the block. Just got body in the way. Ball struck her. Northern Ireland have cleared for the time being, but here come Austria again. Another cross in from the right-hand side. This one deeper, beyond Burns. Biller is there, but not close enough to have an impact. And it's Rebecca McKenna who swings it away with her right foot and out for a throw into Austria on the left-hand side. Tash Dowie. Yeah, see, it's fascinating right now. Austria won't mind this, mind this because they've got possession. They're getting touches on the ball. They're getting their confidence up. They know that they're creating chances. Northern Ireland need to be careful because they're inviting pressure. And that, that's fine if, if the other team aren't creating chances. And that's, that's OK. But the problem is, is that they are creating chances, Austria. Might create another one here. Zadrazil looking for the 1 2 with the 21 year old Herbinger. Zadrazil gets it back to her right, plays it to Hicklesberger Fuller. Rebecca Holloway breathing down her neck. Hicklesberger tries to turn, slices the cross. Behind it goes for the goal kick, and then suddenly you see those green shirts explode into cheering uh, and applause and flag waving uh, because that's a good little bit of defending uh, from Rebecca Holloway, and that will be a goal kick for Northern Ireland. So, coming up to 17 minutes played, nil-nil, with England-Norway in this group uh, kicking off at 8 o'clock this evening. So, goal kick taken short. Play to the goalkeeper, Burns. Diagonal ball to McKenna. Midway inside her own half, wide on the right. Bit of skill from Chloe McCarron. But two Austria players around her, so Biller is back to win it for Austria. And now forward to Puntigam. Puntigam to Zadrazil, little layoff here to Hanshaw. Hanshaw gives it to Herbinger. Herbinger encouraged to run into space here and then fires it left to Barbara Dunst. Dunst with the step over, plays it onto her right foot, then lays it off to Hanshaw. Cross comes in from the left. Vance stretches to try and clear, only as far as Schichtel. Schichtel plays it back here to Venninger, and Venninger turns and comes all the way back to the halfway line. And here's the Austrian captain, Vicky Schnaderbeck, who has been playing for Arsenal for the last few seasons, made the move from Arsenal to Tottenham in the second half of last season. Free kick conceded by Northern Ireland right on the edge of their own penalty area. Hicklesberger Fuller is a handful. 
She is. I think she's been the impressive player so far. I like Dunstan, the left-hand side. She takes up nice little pockets of space. She always wants to go on her right foot and put crosses in, but Northern Ireland can't keep inviting crosses into their box. Eventually, when you play against top-class players, they eventually find a way to break you down. And that's, that's the key for Austria. They want to try and break the resistance of Northern Ireland. They want to try and change the whole dynamic of what they're trying to do. And it's fine defending deep and defending in numbers, but at some stage, the tide has to turn and you've got to be a little bit more ambitious and try and get yourself up the pitch. in an offside position at the moment but just trying to make it awkward for Julie Nelson at the far post for Northern Ireland tricky one for Northern Ireland to defend whistle blows here's Punt again with her left foot drives it low takes a deflection tucked in by Katarina Schichtel from close range and Austria have the lead the offside flag stays down VAR will obviously have a look at it but Northern Ireland behind, they'd almost got to the 20-minute mark there and were looking fairly comfortable, although Austria had seen a lot of the ball, but it looks like Schichtel has given them the lead. Well, it has been coming, you have to say. There's only been one team in an attacking sense who's going to try and make something happen. It's quite clearly onside. I think it's Lauren Wade, who is the deepest of the Northern Ireland players. It's just the simplicity of the goal. A simple free kick in, Northern Ireland don't make first contact. It's a ball that should be defended properly. They've got enough bodies in there and Schichtel won't get an easier finish in international football. Now what do Northern Ireland do? How does the tide turn? How does Kenny Sheens now turn this around that his team can get themselves back in the game? Tash Dowie. Yeah, the biggest issue right now is the way that Northern Ireland are playing. The gaps are too big. So they're playing a defensive system, OK, a 5-4-1. But now that they've conceded, this is the problem. When they're going long, the back four are too slow to get up. Then the midfield can't engage, and then they can't then get in touch with the forwards. So the distances are huge and they're getting stretched. And that's what led to the free kick and that's what's led to the goal. The problem now is they're playing this formation to try and stay in the game and keep it tight. But now they're losing 1-0. So it's how do they then make this formation, which is known as a defensive formation, into a t an attacking formation. Austria 1, Northern Ireland nil in the company of Stephen Cragen and Natasha Dowie. Live for you from the St Mary's Stadium on Radio 5 Live. If you're on the move, the BBC Sounds app, you can listen to us there. You've got the uh, England, South Africa, Women's Cricket International over on Radio 5 Sports Extra at the moment. First one-day international being played uh, at Northampton. Northern Ireland needing to get back in the game. If Northern Ireland lose this game from all the permutations I was working out ahead of it, they will need Norway to beat England tonight to give themselves a chance of having something on the line to play for in terms of qualification uh, in the final uh, group game. But we'll worry about that a little bit later on. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Katarina Schichtel with the goal from close range. The free kick whipped in by Puntigam, took a slight deflection and Schichtel unmarked. And there's a simple long ball over the top and Hickelsberger Fuller at speed is away. On the right, cross comes in, McFadden's there, crucially for Northern Ireland to slide in and make the block. Stephen Craig. Well, whenever the opposition defenders have got time in the ball, your defensive line can't be squeezing the game. If there's no pressure in the ball, you've got to protect your space in behind. Demi Vans get caught trying to edge forward and nick forward, possibly for a short pass. It's one long ball over the top and Hickelsberger Fuller once again showing the pace to stretch North Ireland. They've got to be careful. You know, the other night they conceded two goals in three minutes. It can happen again. Long throw into that Northern Ireland penalty area, flicked on by Venninger. Jackie Burns claims it successfully. Runs out to the edge of her box, just delays things. Bowls one into the feet of Rachel Furness. Plays a nice first time pass out to the left to Holloway. McGuinness trying to turn here and get away from Schichtel, who's leaning over the back of her rather clumsily fouls her. So Northern Ireland have the free kick. If Austria win the game and England win tonight against Norway, England will win the group, Northern Ireland will be out. If Austria win the game and Norway win, England would need to beat Northern Ireland on Friday here to guarantee uh, their progress. But it will depend on what happens uh, in the other game. Austria won Northern Ireland nil midway through the first half. No sign of uh, an enforced water break in these sweltering temperatures, considering we are now midway through the first half. Floated ball down the left-hand side for Northern Ireland. There's a bit of pressure on that Austrian back line. Venninger is there, clears with her right foot, and it goes out for a throw to, to Northern Ireland on the left-hand side. They trail Austria by a goal to nil. 
think it looks as if Demi Vance and Rebecca Holloway have now switched positions. That's where I initially thought they would be because Demi Vance is better when the game's ahead of her and she can run into space and she can run onto the ball. Just exactly what happened in that situation. Rebecca Holloway's probably a better defender, so I think it makes sense to switch them around. Throw into the penalty area, side-footed clearance away from Venninger. Hicklesberger Fuller starts her run from deep. Zadrazil immediately looks up, sees Schnaderbeck in space. Austria up to the halfway line. Hanshaw in the relief for the shade. Floated ball with the outside of her left foot. Jackie Burns off her line, makes a really good tackle. Then the offside flag goes up. Nicole Biller was making the run through, but the, the flag went up only after the challenge was made and that is one of those classic scenarios isn't it where Jackie Burns injures Nicole Billa there that is what a lot of I know ex-professionals worry about with the delayed flags from the assistant referees but she's okay all good free kick for Northern Ireland Austria leading by goal to nil here's Jackie Burns Northern Ireland's keeper strokes the ball across the field with her left foot to Sarah McFadden, blinks into the sunshine as she plays it back to Burns. Burns to Chloe McCarron. McCarron just draws the challenge there of Sadrazil and then rather hurries the pass and knocks it straight out of play for a throw into Austria on the right. Yeah, Northern Ireland need to use better use of their wide players. That's where they've got the overload. They're outnumbered in midfield, so when they're playing now, they need to try and be a little bit more direct with the likes of Wade's pace, you know, McGuinness's pace. Try and get overloads with Vance now, who's a strong dribbler of the ball. They need to use their strengths more. Throw in, coming in from the right for Austria. High looping one into the penalty area. Furness with a really powerful header away. Ball back inside the Austrian half. Schnaderbeck, the only player back there at the moment, goes dribbling away to her left into the centre circle. Zadrazil comes towards her. They exchange a couple of one-twos. Adrazil realises she's got time to turn. Fancies a little dribble here, then slides a low ball with her right foot to Herbinger. Herbinger's touch let her down, but Schichtel is there to get it back to her. Herbinger plays it back to the goal scorer, Schichtel. Low pass down the right. Clever run from Zadrazil in space. Cross in low to that Northern Ireland box. Holloway is there. Vance takes her time on the clearance. It's half blocked. McFadden swings a boot at it. Miss Hughes tries to win a header. Now the ball's loose just inside the Northern Ireland penalty area. McFadden with the challenge on Herbinger. Herbinger's able to keep it, drives the cross in, and behind it goes for a corner, and Northern Ireland just, just couldn't get that clear. Uh, you Goal know, kick, beg your pardon. Goal yeah, kick. I think they look a little bit disjointed. I'm not too sure if the players know what they're trying to do. You know, we spoke about Marissa Callaghan on Thursday night coming on at halftime and making an impact in the heart of the team. She's stuck in a position that looks unnatural to her. She's not touched the ball, she's running about, Northern Ireland are missing clearly an out-and-out centre-forward because when the central defenders or the full-backs or the wing-backs look up to play the ball forward, there's no one in that number nine position. So it's forcing them to play passes in the areas of the pitch where they don't really want to play. Just as you're talking there, Stephen, Rachel Furness has popped into the Marissa Callahan position and Callahan's gone alongside yeah, McCarran. That's exactly what I would have gone with at the start. You know, you've got two out-and-out wingers in McGuinness and Wade who are quick, can get balls into the box. Furness is one of the best headers in the women's game. Use your strengths more. I think definitely that extra day recovery is showing right now. Fitness, the Austrian team, they look fitter. Northern Ireland look tired. And I think that's definitely showing right now in these early stages. And that's why we employ only the very best pundits here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Well spotted by Stephen Cragen and Tash Dowie. Throw in for Northern Ireland. Attacking position on the right-hand side. Can they make something of it? Can they get themselves back in the game? Throw in is taken by McKenna. McKenna gets the ball back from McCarron. Try to get round Dunce. Dunce makes the tackle, clears with the right foot, Stephen. Yeah, I'm just saying from that throw in, we've got three Northern Ireland defenders standing in the halfway and they're not marking anybody. So push people forward, try and get bodies in and around the box. That even if the cross doesn't come off, you've people there to pick up second balls, recycle it and try again. Julie Nelson plays one forward with a right foot. Easy header away for Puntagam. Villa the centre forward, chests it down. McCarran in with a challenge. Tries to get it towards Callahan. Stumbles over. Northern Ireland. Appeal for a free kick. Referee's not interested. Austria start to play out from the back. Here's Schichtel. Deep inside her own half. Back it comes to Venninger. Venninger across to the goalkeeper, Zinsberger, who's in a very light green goalkeeping outfit. White boots, white gloves. Ball out wide to Schichtel, who really had to stretch to keep that in play. She's had her toes trod on a couple of times in the last few minutes. Not complaining. Venninger floats one from deep down the middle of the pitch. Julie Nelson's got time to control it. Launches it high in the air. Miscued pass. And now it goes for a throw into Austria in their left-back position. Yeah, I think that's where maybe Julie Nelson could do a little bit better there. She's not really under a lot of pressure. 
You know, your team's been actually, you know, under the pump for the last 10, 15 minutes. She's got time. Can she keep the ball? Now, obviously, it's a drinks break. So I think this will be a perfect time to regroup. But I definitely think the big thing is these distances between the units. They're just too big for Northern Ireland right now. Some of these Austrian players on our side of the field have decided they, they don't need to go and speak to the coach, Irena Furman. And actually, to speed the game up, this is a good idea. The players closest to this touchline already have water bottles sitting there in the shade to go to. A couple of Northern Ireland players over here as well. A lot of the other players have gone over uh, to the far side of the field. So we are 28 minutes in. The words cooling break have appeared on the big screens at either end of the ground. Austria are leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. So, Stephen, Northern Ireland very much still in it, but it's been a bit disjointed, as you've been saying. It has. I think what they need to do in possession or moving forward, they have to release one of the back three. Whether they go and play as a fullback, I think it's Rebecca Holloway's now playing as a left central defender. So when Northern Ireland attack, if Demi Vance goes forward, Rebecca Holloway becomes a left back. If it's on the right-hand side and Rebecca McKenna goes, Julie Nelson becomes the right-back. Rather than standing three central defenders, Mark and Bela, it means then that when the ball breaks down, Northern Ireland have a player or two players short in some area of the pitch. And Austria are good enough and clever enough to go and play through the zones. Also, I think they've been a little bit too passive. There's not been enough tackles, enough bodily contact from Northern Ireland. They're allowing passes to go past them. They're allowing centre-forwards and midfield players to get the ball on a post. I said it before, all Northern Ireland's attributes in any team sport are about being aggressive, upsetting the opponent, trying to break the rhythm that the opposition are in, and they need to do that. Got to be a bit nastier then, Tash, do you think, Northern Ireland? Yeah, definitely. You know, as a centre-forward, I always watch the forwards on both teams, and there's a big thing in football called rest defence. So what if? You know, so when your team's attacking, as a defender, you're always thinking, what if? OK, what if we lose the ball right now? And the Northern Ireland centre-halves aren't touched tight to the centre-forwards. As a centre-forward, I hate it when a centre-half is down my Achilles, grabbing me and not letting me breathe. When I know I've got five or six yards to turn and face up, I'm thinking, happy days. So these Northern Ireland defenders, that's their strength. They're aggressive. That's what they're good at, defending. Show what you're good, what you're good at. Austria won Northern Ireland nil. The players have had their drinks. We're just about ready to go again. Live on Five Live this afternoon. Also on BBC Radio Ulster, our commentary available uh, with the BBC Pictures via the iPlayer and the BBC Sport website as well, as will be the case for England-Norway. Full commentary on that game this evening kicks off at 8 o'clock uh, at the Amex Stadium. Vicky Sparks, Stephen Warnock and Karen Barsley, your commentary team there. Tash back in action tomorrow night for us for Germany against Spain. Full commentary on that one. Austria on the offensive. Here's the centre-forward. Biller has had a good game so far. Plays it back to Herbinger. Looks up, fires the cross into the Northern Ireland box. McKenna stretches, clears it with her right foot. Anshaw goes back for Austria and plays the ball back into her own half. Here's Venninger. Dummies a pass to the right-hand side and then skids the ball low across the immaculate playing surface here to Hanshaw. Hanshaw rolls it back to Schnatterbeck. Schnatterbeck moves from shade to sunshine. Little one-two with Puntigam. Marissa Callahan is closing in on Puntigam there, but she's got time to play it back to Schnatterbeck, right in the middle of the pitch. Zadrazil with the layoff to Schnatterbeck again. So similar patterns from Austria here. And now Schnatterbeck is just invited to, to move into space here, just inside the Northern Ireland half. Swings her ball out to the left. Hanshaw with the layoff. Patient build-up from Austria. Here's Puntigam. Low pass into the feet of the centre-forward, Biller. Biller lays it off to her left to Hanshaw. Now Puntigam gives chase down the left, can't keep the ball in play, and it goes behind for the Northern Ireland uh, goal kick. So all your uh, interviews, uh, reaction, insight to the England and Northern Ireland camps will come for you on that Daily Euros podcast. If you are a fan of our sporting podcast, how could you not be? I have to recommend the latest All About the Open podcast, which is all about Tiger Woods and his relationship with the Open. I listened to it. Uh, on the way to the game today. Open Championship starts Thursday. It is a fantastic listen. BBC Sounds out. Make sure you, you give it a go. Throw in for Austria. Uh, wide on the left, our coverage of the Open Championship. We'll have the big preview programme Wednesday night and then our extensive commentary, as always, Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday. It's set to be an absolute cracker with the sun shining in St Andrews as well. Hanshaw waiting to take the throw. Another long one for Northern Ireland to defend into the near post area. McCarran on the volley, flicks a right-footed clearance away. Clever header from McGuinness infield, looking for Marissa Callahan. 
bundled over by Herbinger. Herbinger's holding her right ear as if she was caught by Callahan. there. Neither team gets the free kick and Austria continue to play just inside the Northern Ireland half. Dunst, turn and pass. Hanshaw stretching the long legs, chased by McKenna, just keeps the ball in play. Down by the byline on the left-hand side is Austria attack. Bit of a wrestling match going on there. Last touch comes off McKenna, throw in for Austria on the left. They still lead Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. Hanshaw waits to take. Plenty of room here if you want a long run up for the throw. Two or three yards of grass and then the sort of artificial matting, which is bright red here at Southampton. Hanshaw with the throw in. McFadden heads it away. Drops again for McCarran. Gives it the old heave ho with the right foot. Headed forward by Venninger. Might break for McCarran in midfield, but doesn't. She's tackled. Herbinger plays it to Biller. Biller is forced away from goal by Julie Nelson. Back it comes to Puntigan. Puntigan chips it to the left. Good first touch from Hanshaw. Run made by Herbinger down the left. Hanshaw uses it as a decoy. Here's Puntigam just outside the area. Right-footed ball is low and well read at the back there by Holloway. Holloway's lost it, though, on the edge of the Northern Ireland box. Northern Ireland got to be careful here. Breaks again for Rebecca Holloway. Head up, striding forward. Pass intercepted. Could be dangerous for Northern Ireland now. Schichtel, her pass this time is blocked by McCarran and now the game's opening up for Northern Ireland Furness stretches got to get to that ball first does so half wins the 50-50 but Zadrazil is there knocks it back to Schnaderbeck and back Austria go uh, to their goal for the half an opportunity yeah, Stephen Craig it is but you know what they spent so long without the ball they're covering so much distance when the ball comes near them or the ball breaks five yards away they don't have the energy to chase it down Austria nearly caught me out there taking a sip of water Zadrazil goes long from right to left Dunst is offside thankfully the whistle blows free kick for Northern Ireland. Tash Dowie. Yeah, they're making themselves hard. You know, you know, they're making life hard for themselves. You know, I'm seeing pictures where the goalkeeper's clipping it out to the fullback, but then everyone, all the other players on the other side, they're not getting over. So like I said, it's not just distances in between the lines, but it's distances throughout the width of the game as well. You know, you need support. If you're going to be defending for most of the game, when you do have the ball, you need to be able to be five or six yards away from your teammates supporting them, different angles of support. Right now, players are too isolated, and that's why the turnover of the ball is happening. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. There is more turnover. Hickelsberger Fuller slightly overruns it. McFadden in with the challenge. Loose ball breaks to Hanshaw. She's moving at speed. That's a foul from Chloe McCarran. Hanshaw just too quick for her. Moved the ball away from her. Probably just too far out for a shot. Probably a good 35 yards out. Free kick for Austria in a fairly central position. Austria leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. England, Norway to come, uh, kicking off at 8 o'clock this evening. So let's see what Austria can do with this. They, of course, were first-timers at the last Euros, like Northern Ireland are at, at this Euros, and made it all the way through to the semi-final before eventually being knocked out on penalties by Denmark, who went on to lose the final to the Netherlands. Free kick for Austria, waiting for the referee's whistle here. In it comes, Hanshaw, left-footed delivery, headed away, ball drops inside the Northern Ireland half, McGuinness is able to lay it off to Chloe McCarran, Lauren Wade is on the move down the right, McCarran couldn't release the pass in time, back she comes to Jackie Burns, just gets enough on the pass, Burns very coolly just knocks her ball past the on-rushing Biller, Plays it into uh, Demi Vance and away Northern Ireland come and Rachel Furness prefers the ball like that. At her feet, moving forward, deeper position for Northern Ireland. Julie Nelson, low pass out to the right, finds McKenna. Back to Nelson again. Nelson's got to be careful. She doesn't get caught here. Zadrazil in with the challenge. Eventually goes out of play. Throw in to Austria, but one of the Northern Ireland players is down. Demi Vance is down over on the left-hand side, which will be a concern for Northern Ireland. And I think you can see later in this first half as well the sort of effect, the temperature. It's just, it's just energy sapping playing this heat, isn't it, Steve? It is. And, you know, at, at times, similar to Thursday night, Northern Ireland are posing their own problems. I just think at times they're complicating the game. They're trying to play passes that aren't on. They're trying to force the issue. And I understand Kenny Shields wants them to play, and the players will understand that. But he has to give the players the freedom to make decisions on the pitch, to think, you know what, this is not on. Let's play in the opposition half for five minutes. Players have to take control. There's enough experience and enough caps on that pitch 
for someone to have an influence because when you're in the game it's maybe slightly different watching it but when you're in the game you can feel you can sense the pressure you can sense the tide turning towards you so sometimes you have to flip it around and do something a little bit different so I would like to see Sarah McFadden Julie Nelson and Demi Vance even Marissa Callaghan can take hold of what's happening in the game talk to the teammates and just change it up but what blows my mind as well is that you know what you're good at. You know what you're getting success from. Being direct, looking in behind, looking for the pace of Wade and McGuinness, and then they're not doing it. I don't. I don't understand. It blows my mind. It's football's not a hard game. It's a simple game. Lauren Wade interception, chance to run at the Austrian defence. Puntergam's quick though. Is back to cover it for Austria. McKenna in support of Wade for Northern Ireland from the right wing back position. Turns, plays it back to Julie Nelson. Nelson to McCarran. Ball just jumps up off the turf after her first touch. High bouncing pass from her. Comes out to Rebecca Holloway in the inside left channel. Demi Vance wide left. Austria back in numbers now, and it's come back to the halfway line for Northern Ireland. McFadden wide to Vance on the left-hand side. Early cross comes in, chested down by Marissa Callahan, trying to turn on the edge of the box, trying to make space, and eventually tackled in the end by Venninger. Very nearly manoeuvred it into a position where she might be able to get a strike away. Austria won Northern Ireland nil. It's good play. You know, it's the first time there's been four or five passes in the Austrian half, but. It just shows you the energy of midfield getting forward. The ball comes into Marissa Callaghan's chest. She takes a touch. She's desperate for someone to come and link up. The midfielder stand and watching her to see what's going on. So when the ball goes forward, as a midfield player, you've got to run forward. See, when the ball goes over your head, you've also got to run back. So it's a thankless task, but you have to gamble and take risks. Worth making the point as well, Tash. You know, and, and Kenny Shields said it ahead of the game. Simone McGill is, is not out there because of, because of that knee injury. They, Northern Ireland desperately, desperately miss her in that position, don't they? Yeah, they do. You know, her runs in behind, the threat that she has, she's a goal scorer, just her presence on the pitch lifts this Northern Ireland team. But that's the situation that they're in right now, so then they need to play to the players' strengths that they've got out there. It's great hold-up play there by the captain, but people like what Steve said, they need to support her earlier, and then you've got a great opportunity for a strike on the end of goal. But really positive play there by Northern Ireland. Just about five minutes to play at the end of the first half here. Boiling temperatures. Austria leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. Northern Ireland, I think, will be kicking themselves slightly. Defending from the set piece. Schichtel left unmarked. Time the run well. Clearly onside. Stuck it in from a couple of yards out. Zinsberger, Arsenal's goalkeeper with the ball at her feet, drills it up the middle of the pitch. McFadden reads that well. Was well in front of Nicole Biller. Biller in with the tackle, though. And now Northern Ireland got to be careful. McFadden, good challenge on Hicklesberger Fuller, who was about to get away from her. Throw in for Austria on the right, taken quickly. And again, McFadden reads it well. Stooping header this time, goes out for another throw. She picked up a yellow card in the first game, Sarah McFadden. So it's just got to be a little bit careful in this game because if she gets another one, uh, she would miss the England game here on Friday night, which, of course, you will be able to hear in full and watch on BBC One or watch the BBC pictures and listen to our commentary as you can do with this one uh, on Friday night. Throw into the Northern Ireland penalty area. Couple of headers. Ball drops down in the box. Little layoff here. Julie Nelson's there first for Northern Ireland. Clears with her right foot. Puntigam goes chasing back. Plays it back into her own half. Schnaderbeck calmly rolls it forward. Puntigam is able to turn. Barbara Dunst in quite a bit of space on the left-hand side. Zadra Zil's a lovely mover with the ball. Herbinger tries to slide it through. Biller doesn't like the pass. It was nowhere near her, actually. And Jackie Burns is able to come out and collect. I'd definitely say the one thing right now for Northern Ireland is that they're still in this game. You know, it hasn't been the prettiest of first halves. Yes, Austria have had some chances, but they're 41 minutes into the game and it's only 1-0. So that's a real positive. They've got all to play for second half. That's a free kick, surely. Kirsty McGuinness wins the header. And I think it's uh, Schichtal just bumps into the back of her. Yeah. So for me, it's an obvious free kick. I mean, that hasn't separated the teams, but you like to see small things go your way. Uh, ball forward into the Northern Ireland half. Rebecca McKenna's got it covered. Plays back to Jackie Burns. Red shirt's closing in. Couldn't find a pass. Here's Dunst. Going to try and lob Burns. Oh, tips it onto the bar. Fabulous save from the Northern Ireland goalkeeper. So nearly 2-0. It looked like it was out of her reach and bending over her into the back of the net. Got the fingertips to it and tips it onto the woodwork. Fabulous save. Danger not over yet. Here's Zad Brazil on the right-hand side. Austria leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. Cross comes in, burn stretches and makes the catch. Brilliant save. She's been for saves. You know, she's given Dunst the ball to say, can you chip me from 30 yards because I'm going to run back and try and save this. So she took a risk. 
and then produced a piece of magic to yeah. keep the game at 1-0 because a second goal before half-time would be a real hammer blow for Northern Ireland against them. Here's Marissa Callahan, Northern Ireland's captain on the ball. They're in the white shirts, the black shorts, the black socks, playing from left to right in the first half, trailing Austria by a goal to nil in the game, although yet to test Zinsberger. Sarah McFadden across to Holloway. Holloway manages to bundle away past Hicklesberger. Fuller who's had to foul her. So free kick for Northern Ireland, which they can deliver in from deep inside the Austrian half and try and put some pressure uh, on the Austrian back line. Surely you put your, your central defenders up, Sarah McFadden, Julie Nelson, you're almost on half-time. Why yeah. not throw the ball in and try and you know, get a scrappy goal or, 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 or get something to come your way? There's only three or four forwards. Yeah. Julie Nelson, who scored the other night, is now standing in the halfway line. So things like that confuse me a little bit. Yeah, not long left in the first half and Northern Ireland need an equaliser. Demi Vance fires this into the box from deep. Sarah McFadden's gone down, holds her arms out as if she wants a penalty. The ball's gone behind for a corner. Video assistant referee from Spain, Jose Maria Sanchez, can have a look at that while we wait. Marissa Callahan has a word with the referee. Dangerous delivery, actually, from a long way out. Yeah, and I, I want Northern Ireland to be a little bit more streetwise. You know, this is this is tournament football now. I'm not saying get around the ref, but let her know. You know, not just the player that's been fouled, the captain, a couple of players. Put a bit of pressure on the referee there. Closing stages uh, of the first half. Corner for Northern Ireland. They've got Julie Nelson on the goal line and three other attackers in the box and four players outside the penalty. Not, not really involved in the set piece. They could go short to Kirsty McGuinness or it might just come in first time from Demi Vance. Vance holds her left arm in the air, goes deep to the back post. Venninger's there, heads it behind. Another corner for Northern Ireland. Good pressure, but Stephen, I know you want more in the area yeah. there. It's almost half time. There's four Northern Ireland players outside the box picking up one Austrian player. You know, again, we've got three ring in the box. Lauren Wade's a, a goal scoring wide player or a centre forward. Why is she outside the box? Marissa Callaghan, go and get in the box. Chloe McCarran can go on the edge and it gives you two extra players in. Northern Ireland put two crosses into the box or two, two set plays into the box in this half and it's caused a little bit of concern. So go and try and capitalise on it. Corner late in the first half for Northern Ireland. We saw the joy that the Julie Nelson goal brought on Thursday. How about another one right now? Demi Vance, more deep delivery. Furness with the first header. Bounces dangerously on the edge of the six-yard box. Biller is back there, the centre forward for Austria. McFadden leaps into a challenge from the side. Biller clears. She's not happy with the challenge. Ball goes out for a throw-in to Austria in their left-back position. Great commitment from Sarah McFadden, but has got to be careful that she doesn't get herself booked because I know, for one, she will not want to miss the game against England here on Friday night. So, added time coming shortly. A minute, I think, went up on the board there. It went up and down in a, in a flash. Here's McFadden. Comes forward, chests it down, holding off the challenge of Biller. Plays it wide to Demi Vance. Good spell for Northern Ireland late in the first half, this. Vance with a little nutmeg, taking the ball into the penalty area. Schichtel's there first to clear. McFadden is down injured at the moment. Rebecca Holloway wins the ball for Northern Ireland. Kirsty McGuinness drives it in with her left foot straight at the keeper, Zinsberger, who makes a very comfortable catch. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Three minutes of added time, I beg your pardon, at the end of the first half. Good late spell in the half for Northern Ireland. Chloe McCarran, I think. Is that McCarran who's down? No, it's McFadden. McFadden is down who went down initially holding her, holding her right ankle. Yeah, that's the last person you want to see down on the pitch right now for Northern Ireland. I don't know whether it's the tackle that she did earlier or, or the crunching tackle straight after, but I love that. You know, she basically is what Northern Ireland are about and the players need to get around her when she's making those big tackles. Give her a high five, you know, get the team up for it. But I really like the spell that Northern Ireland are having now in the last five, ten minutes. I think a little bit, bit naive there by McGuinness to have a shot from so far out. But also, I don't mind that, you know, have a go. Why not? You know, if you don't shoot, you don't score. I think the last four or five minutes has been a case of they've taken the shackles off, as if they've just released themselves a little bit. And what they've shown is, is that Austria are a decent team. They've probably looked better because Northern Ireland have been too passive. But when you turn them down the side and you make contact in midfield and you recycle the ball a little bit higher up, I think they're beatable. But they have to convince themselves. And Kenny Sheen's halftime team talk was vital on Thursday. It's even more important tonight. Well, that'll be coming the Northern Ireland players' way fairly shortly. We're into added time at the end of the first half. Five live, BBC Sounds, BBC Ulster for the commentary this afternoon as well. Austria leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. 
goal came after 20 minutes of the first half. Katarina Schichtel, uh, the right back for Austria from close range, an Austrian free kick that was whipped in from the corner of the penalty area. About a minute to play here, and I'm sure the players will be ready for a drink and a cooling break inside those Southampton changing rooms. Northern Ireland got to make sure they don't concede in the last minute of this half. Venninger floats across into the box. Biller heads it to her right, headed away by Vance. Schichtel comes forward, almost finds Biller with the pass. Holloway with a header, McCarran's caught there. Schichtel came flying in for what she thought was going to be a volley. She didn't volley the ball, she volleyed the player. Free kick for Northern Ireland. Oh, Rachel Furness has turned her back to play. Sarah McFadden was looking for Furness down the left. Furness was chatting to Kenny Shields. It's gone straight out for a throw into Austria on the right. That's where it's almost half time. The player should know that. Just take a breath. It's been tough. If you win it 1 0, you're still in the game. But rather than trying to force the issue and make things happen. Right, take a breather, everyone. Go and have a cold drink. Half time at the St Mary's Stadium. Austria leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. Katarina Schichtel, the goal scorer. But as we were saying, Stephen, that last five, six minutes of the first half, little bit of a blueprint there for Northern Ireland to go out in the second half. Well, we hoped it would carry on the good work of the second half on Thursday and head into tonight's game. They haven't done that. What they have to do now is just use that four or five or six minutes they had at the end of the first half and carry that into the second half. It has to convince them a little bit more that they can get at this Austrian side, commit players forward, rather than stepping back and being fearful, step forward in the battle. When the ball goes forward, go after, try and close those gaps. I would like to see Kenny possibly change the shape. Sarah McFadden can go and play as a holding midfield player, which means she's protecting the two centre halves for anything in the feet, which then frees up a furnace, it frees up McCarran, frees up Callan, just to play a little bit higher up the pitch. Get on the front foot, Tash, take some risks. Yeah, they need to believe in themselves a bit more. You know, it took them till the second half against Norway to believe, and now it's taken them till the last five minutes of the first half to believe. If you don't believe in yourself as a player, then who is going to believe in you? They're the ones out there, they've got to make it happen. Half time, Austria one, Northern Ireland nil. Steve. Steve. Interesting first half. We'll hear the thoughts of Kerry Beatty and Claire Carson in a moment. But at 5.51, we will pause for the latest BBC News. BBC News and I.
Listen live on digital, online or on BBC Sounds. Gavin Andrews with you in studio in Belfast. Elsewhere this evening, Ulster's Michael Laurie and Stuart McCluskey are both in the Ireland 15 to face the Maori All Blacks in Wellington tomorrow. Laurie makes his first start of the tour at fullback. McCluskey, who was called into the squad as injury cover, replaces Bundyaki at inside centre. Monster wing Keith Earls will lead a much changed Irish side after Saturday's historic test win over the All Blacks, captaining his country for the first time. Andy McEntee is set to be appointed as the new Antrim senior Gaelic football manager the former Meath boss will take over from Tyrone Great Enda McGinley who stepped down in May and Claire Taggart has returned home to Larne with two gold medals from the Boccia World Cup in Portugal she added to the individual gold she won last week with a team medal when GB defeated Brazil yesterday. Back to the football and England-Norway from the Amex Stadium in Brighton is an 8 o'clock kick-off. That game live on BBC One and 5 Live. Half-time in Southampton and it's Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Kerry Beatty and Claire Carson are with me. Claire, first of all, where do we start with that first half? Um, I think we made it quite difficult for ourselves you know um, Austria have probably done their homework in terms of they have to come out of the traps early it's a big big game for both teams um, we talked about it there at length um, and they put us under pressure um, from the off they know we like to play out from the back and they've nullified that and we, we haven't done that successfully in the first half as much as we, we would have liked to our wing backs have been hemmed in and not got to get up the pitch and, and support our, our two or two attacking players, um, so it's been quite difficult for us. Um, but I will say that they'll be disappointed to have conceded from a set piece. Um, apart from that, we were under sustained pressure for a lot of the first half, but we did control that, and there wasn't many clear cut chances. So the set piece will be disappointed for them. Um, the last ten minutes, we we looked like we settled into the game, and you know we had a bit more confidence as we grew in the game. I like that we we changed and put Demi fans higher up the pitch, and it seemed to work a little bit, give us a bit more of an outlet, and and we need to get our attacking players on the ball a little bit more and show their creativity and have a little bit of bit of belief, like we did in the last ten minutes of the game. And if we can start the second half the way we finish this one, I think it'll be a different game because we're by no means out of this. It's one 0 and it's all to play for. Kerry, what stood out for you? Yeah, I mean, I think the girls will be disappointed with the half. Um, I think I'd just love to see the midfielders get on a wee bit more um, and, and obviously the wing-backs a wee bit further forward. At some point, you can see like Lauren Wade and Kirsty McGuinness are almost back on top of them. Um, so I'd like to push them forward a wee bit more and, and get um, Rachel Furness on the ball a wee bit more as well because she can dictate the play and then the girls can just go forward. Who are the players and, and well we know the coaches what well, they'll be maybe saying in there at half time but who, who are the players you know Kerry you, you know that dressing room well who, who'll be talking in there yeah I mean there's big personalities in the changing room of course um, I think again Rachel Furness she'll be driving the girls on and um, Sarah McFadden as well all sort of the senior players will be, be trying to push the girls that wee bit harder in the second half I think there'll be big discussions um, I think there will be changes I think something needs to change at the end of the day if it was me in that position now, I'd be saying, girls, we've nothing to lose. So let's just put ourselves out there a wee bit more. It's easy to sit here and say <laughs> that players need to be brave, but what do you think, Claire? What do they need to do? Um, Kenny spoke about it after the opening game and he says, you know, it's tournament football. We have to go and take risks. And he trusts in every player that he picks and he wants them to go and play football and express themselves. And every single person on the pitch tonight is a leader in their own right. Um, and I know some of them quite personally, as, as does Kerry. And every single one of those girls have a role to play here. And it's the biggest 45 minutes of the tournament so far that they're going into here. And every single one of them will want to go out and change this and make a difference and have an impact. But as Kerry says, I think our midfielders, the likes of Marissa and, and Furness especially, they're, they're some of the most creative players we have in, in the middle of the park. And they'll want to go and get on the ball and dictate what happens and go and link up with our, with our attackers. And, you know, you've Kirsty McGuinness and you've Lauren Wade, who are two of the most direct people in, in, the, in the squad. And they, if we can isolate them in 1v1 situations, there's no two better people to go and take people on and create chances for us. Well, they take a lot of heart from the way they finished the half and maybe talk about the goal because it was it was a pretty soft one, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Demi, obviously, that tackle on the edge of the box um, was just unlucky. Sometimes you can miss time a tackle, but it took a wee deflection off the wall and that can just happen. So um, I think 
they'll be disappointed with giving away the free kick from the start. But I think the last 10 minutes of the half was very good and um, very positive. And I think that we can, if we can carry that into the second half, I think we'll, we'll get off to a good start. It's difficult for Kerry to say who should come on and what should be done. Claire, maybe you can. What would you do to mix it up, get the coach's hat on? Yeah, I think it's quite evident that we're missing a, a, a hold up, a link up player, like a, you know. Like a Kerry? <laughs> like a, a Kerry, like your Simone would have give you, you know, holds up the ball well and, and brings your midfield into play and links the play with, with the other attackers and helps us to get up the pitch and holds it in and, and, and you know, people get around her and support her off that. Um, I think we have to look at Sarah McFadden, how she's starting to take a, a bit more of a leadership role and coming out from the back with the ball, which has helped us when, we were, when we're wanting to go forward and we're looking for someone to do that. But again, as you say, we need that up top when the ball is coming out. Can we look after that little bit better to give time for our midfielders and our, and our, and our wide people to go and support and, and build our attacks from there? She's sitting here, so it's difficult for Kerry to say, but you'd have yeah. loved to have maybe seen her there. Absolutely, it's always hard when you talk to players and you know them personally, um, and you know what they can bring to the, the game. And you know, her, her link up play. She she was at Glen Torn. She was the top goal scorer in our league last year, which got her a move across the water. Um, so she's been phenom- phenomenal in the last year and a half. Um, and it's very very hard for her to probably sit and listen to this as well. But um, yeah, it, she she could have made a difference, you know. But but he trusts in the people that he's brought. I have to point out, you've got Caitlin McGuinness sir. you've got um, young Emily Wilson that can come on and give a different dynamic as well as, as forwards and they can bring something else here. If he does want to change the formation, they'll run in behind, you know, they'll give you they'll give you different options as well. So so we'll look forward to see what he does with that as well and if he if he changes up how he wants to approach and attack the game. Kerry, what's it been like for you having to sit over here? You'd love to be there, but to have to sit and watch it here. Yeah, obviously it's uh, gotten, but it gives me a different perspective as well. Obviously, I'm very young, so to watch the girls perform in our first major tournament, it gives me, you know, the fire in the belly to to want to go on and achieve more. Um, I think that we can do it again, and I think that you know, grassroots players come in. You know, we're all getting better, which is exciting to see. But as Claire said, like you've got Emily and Caitlin who can come on and change the game very easily and give us something different. Um, instead of holding it in, maybe something different in behind. How are the players, and I know you played with a lot of them as well, Claire, how are the players coping with this tournament football? Because it is very new for them and are they getting a sense of how big a deal it is? Oh yeah, they, they never underestimate the the impact that they're having on the, the local game here. You know, the role models first and foremost and how they conduct themselves on and off the pitch has been exceptional. They always have time for the fans. They're always willing to give up their time. Um off the pitch and the work that are that is being done behind the scenes for those girls to get them in, in, in peak performance going into the into the um tournament itself as Kerry well knows it's been nothing short of phenomenal you know the work that in terms of their nutrition the full time setup what what individually they all need um there's no been no no stone unt- unturned in trying to get them to the peak level going into this tournament and I just would like to see them now have a little bit of belief in this and it's 45 minutes here and you're you're still in the game go for it and and have no regrets does it feel like a big opportunity for the players Kerry yeah definitely I mean it's it's our it's our chance to put ourselves out there to show our talents on big stages I think that the girls are more than capable now of getting professional contracts and, and pushing across the water obviously I'd done it in January but there's loads of players Herbinger. So Feiersinger started the first game. Double change, actually, because Marina Georgieva, uh, the defender, is coming on for Schnaderbeck. So Georgieva appeared in the England game late on, but it means the skipper, Vicky Schnaderbeck, is coming off at half-time for Austria. Double change for them. They're leading by a goal to nil. 26 degrees centigrade. What, what, was, our, what was our peak? 
today. Did we hit? Have we hit 30 or I don't know? Well, it was 27, uh, I think. Okay, so it's in dropped. the shade pre -game. Uh, Okay. So you'd have thought it would have been yeah. 30 roundabout. Yeah. Still warm, still very warm uh, out there. And Northern Ireland chasing the game. They had a good spell at the end of the first half, need to get back on the front foot. Austria won, Northern Ireland nil. If Northern Ireland lose this game, they need, from their point of view, Norway to beat England tonight. If that were to happen, those two results, England would then need to beat Northern Ireland to guarantee progress. Northern Ireland would need to beat England and hope that Norway beat Austria. That's where we could be come the end of the game this afternoon. Waiting for the whistle to blow to get the second half underway. Stephen Cragen and Natasha Dowie sitting alongside. Uh, welcome to our listeners uh, again from BBC Radio Ulster with us for the game this afternoon. We're live on Five Live if you're on the move. Five Live available uh, on the BBC Sounds app, uh, as is the Daily Euros uh, podcast, which is well worth a listen throughout this tournament. So double change for Austria at half-time. Northern Ireland with the same 11 that started the game. Jackie Burns in goal, three centre-backs. Julian Nelson, Sarah McFadden, and Rebecca Holloway is starting second half at left-sided centre-back. So Demi Vance, the left wing-back, Rebecca McKenna in for Abby McGee on the right-hand side. Chloe McCarran, the skipper, Marissa Callahan, and Rachel Furness, the midfield three. Kirsty McGuinness and Lauren Wade, the front two. Quiet start to the second half. Throw in for Austria. They're in the red shirts, white shorts, red socks, and they are playing from left to right in this second half. So if you know your St Mary's Stadium, possibly from your Premier League football. They are attacking the Chapel Stand. Away to our right-hand side, the goal scorer, Katarina Schichtel. Giant figure who plays at right back, has played a ball down the right. It's taken a deflection, but off a teammate and gone out for a throw into Northern Ireland in the left-back uh, position. So that'll be taken by Demi Vance. Vance midway inside her own half. Schichtel above Callahan wins the header. And out it goes for, a, for another Northern Ireland throw. Northern Ireland, in the second half of their first game, Stephen, came flying out of the blocks and started really well. They need exactly the same here, don't they? Well, they do, and you kind of hope that, that the weather dropping a little bit in temperature may just help them a little bit more. I think certainly half-time they would have looked forward to. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any change in their style or ambition as they go and try and chase this team down. Austria on the ball with Puntagam inside their own half. Georgieva gets her first touch uh, of the game. She was in the Austrian squad at Euro 2017, but didn't get on the pitch. You're seeing some action at this tournament. The ball's gone out for a throw-in for Austria on the right-hand side, and we're looking out for Laura Feiertzinger uh, in this second half as well, who's come on for Herbinger. Ball across from Venninger. Intercepted, Julie Nelson with a chance to clear. That's half blocked. Hanshaw is able to bring the ball under control for Austria on the left-hand side. Diagonal in towards the feet of Biller. First touch gets away from her. Goes behind for the goal kick from Northern Ireland. So first, second half thoughts from Natasha Dowie. Yeah, I'm really intrigued by the changes by Austria. You know, it's, it's only 1-0. Northern Ireland is still in the game. This game isn't done. And for your captain to go off, I mean, I don't know whether she picked up an injury. I didn't see anything in the first half, but... That's a big change for Austria. Uh, I can't see them thinking, oh, you know, we'll rest players right now. I think it's too soon for that. So I'm intrigued as to why those changes were, were made, but we'll see how they do in the second half. So, free kick Northern Ireland, offside from that previous Austrian attack. Cleared by Jackie Burns with her left foot. Eight o'clock kickoff tonight at the Amex when the temperature will be a little cooler, but still a warm evening on the south coast of England. England against Norway tonight. Should be a cracking game of football, that one. On BBC One, but if you want that five live commentary, you can get it with the TV pictures uh, via the iPlayer and the BBC Sport website, as you can with this game. Jackie Burns, Northern Ireland's keeper. One brilliant save in the first half, tipping the dunst effort onto the crossbar. Northern Ireland playing out from inside their own half. Callahan's ball to the left. Zadrazil sort of dummy to slide tackle there, left the ball. And cleverly, it goes out for a throw, and she wants that ball immediately. She set her arms out for three or four seconds there, and she's one who's very comfortable taking the ball under pressure as well. Schichtel decided it wasn't on, and so Austria have come round the back again. Northern Ireland in the white shirts, black shorts, black socks. 
playing from right to left in the second half. Chloe McCarron in with an early interception. Austria have it again. Zadrazil plays the ball to Puntigan, moving forward. Slides a good pass in towards Feiertinger. Julie Nelson with the interception, but Dunst is there quickly for Austria. Wide on the left-hand side, trying to work it onto the right foot for a shot here. Head to the box, gets that shot away. Julie Nelson makes the block. Austria still have it. Hixelberger, Fuller, now Biller. Biller trying to bay the ball to the left-hand side. Northern Ireland get enough bodies in the way. McCarron with a good right-footed pass out from deep. And then Lauren Wade can't control it, runs off her right foot and goes out for a throw-in to Austria on the left. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Yeah, one of the problems is whenever Marissa Callaghan goes forward to press and, and becomes a centre-forward, Rachel Furness and Chloe McCarron are outnumbered. There's three centre-midfield players against two. So if one of them goes to try and press or, or try and close down, they're just simply picked off. So... That's where, you know, the young uh, Julie Andrews, who, who's on the bench, was the Ulster Footballer of the Year last year for Glen Soane in the Irish League. A little bit of energy, a little bit of fresh, just something different to try and mix it up because, um, you know, the longer it goes, Kenny's going to have to make some sort of impact from the side. With Austria playing, got to make sure you remember that's Jolie Andrews and not Julie Andrews. And the old Sound of Music, which, by the way, Stephen Cragen, uh, is Chris Sutton's favourite film. Did you know that? Did you know that? It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> That is a fact. Five minutes gone, second half. Austria leading Northern Ireland by uh, a goal to nil. How cool is that as well? I've just seen on the TV there that the Southampton manager, uh, Ralph, is it Hassan Hossel? Uh, obviously, yeah. he's, he's Austrian. He's here supporting the team. I think that's brilliant that he's come out to support the Austrian team here today. Ball forward from Georgieva. Might drop to Zadrazil, 30 yards from the Northern Ireland goal. Chloe McCarran right on top of her. Zadrazil's lost the boot, still got the pass away. Lauren Wade is able to intercept. McCarron on the ball. A couple of red shirts around her. Good presence of mind under pressure there, just to hold on to it, keep possession. Demi Vance comes striding down the left-hand side for Northern Ireland, eventually stopped by Hicklesberger Fuller. And out it goes for a Northern Ireland throw on the left. I still would like to see when, when Demi Vance is on the touchline, she's looking for an option. Lauren Wade, for me, is still wide in the right-hand side. She's got to come in off the line and almost be a centre forward. You know, when the play's in this half of the pitch, she's got to be in this half of the pitch. As the ball starts going towards her across the pitch, then she can start going wide. So she can't be isolated. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Marissa Callahan, good skills. Plays the ball down the left to Vance. Northern Ireland were hoping that might go out for a corner. Just slides the other side of the corner flag. So it's a throw in in a very attacking position wide on the left hand side. Austria with the Arsenal goalkeeper, Manuela Zinsberger in goal. Katarina Schichtel, the right back. Verena Hanshaw, the left back. Karina Veninger now has Marina Georgieva as her centre back partner. Sarah Puntigam as the holding midfielder. Zadrazil now partnered by Feiersinger in that Austrian midfield. Vance is trying to make ground down the left. Stopped by Puntigam down by the byline. Brilliant from Schichtel. Worked her way out of a tie space. Hicklesberger Fuller tackled here by McGuinness. She's claiming throw in Northern Ireland. Referee didn't see it that way throw in for Austria. Hicklesberger Fuller with the pace down the right. Barbara Dunst very dangerous on the left-hand side and the centre forward Nicole Billows has been having a good old battle with Sarah McFadden for Northern Ireland this afternoon. So Austria have the ball with Venninger, very experienced international, thumps it forward with her right foot. Good leap by Biller, flicks it on. She's annoyed that Hicklesberger Fuller is not on the move and trying to get on the end of that. So Northern Ireland play it back to Jackie Burns, who clears with her left foot. Schickel reads it, heads the bouncing ball forward. McFadden is there for Northern Ireland, shrugs off the challenge of Hicklesberger Fuller, slings it down the left-hand side, chased by Callahan and McGuinness. Venninger under pressure, good pressure from Northern Ireland. They win a throw on the left. Simple football. You know, I said in the first half, Northern Ireland at times are overcomplicating it. They're trying to play passes that probably aren't on, they're forcing the issue, whereas Sarah McFadden says, you know what, I'm going to put it in behind you and see what happens. Suddenly you win a throw in deep in the Austrian half. Throw in taken by Vance, finds McGuinness, Vance is tackled by Schichtel. Good start to the second half from Northern Ireland. Can they find themselves a goal and get this game back level and give themselves a better chance of trying to qualify from this group? And of course, a major achievement would be, as they have admitted themselves, to, to take something from one of these three games, to get a point, to get three points, in this, their debut at a major international competition. High ball dropping on the edge of the Austrian box. McCarran in with the tackle. Lauren Wade on the turn. Balloons a shot over the crossbar. And behind it goes for a goal kick. Few jelly babies remaining from the half-time treats. 
controversially, Tash Dowie, green and yellow, your favourite flavours. 100%. Citrus colours are the best. It's got to be green and yellow all day. I do think that's controversial. I don't know anyone who... Stephen, you? No, I, to be fair, I normally just dip my hand in, throw them into don't the mouth. Don't have a favourite. Don't even look at colours. Oh, right, straight no. into the mouth. See, red and black for me, definitely, but, but green and yellow, they're all yours, Tash, and there's some left in there as well for for the end of the game. Nine minutes gone, second half. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Hanshaw bringing the ball forward at speed for Austria. Plays it wide to the left. Here's Dunst. McKenna goes over to try and put the challenge in. Cross comes in. Headed away here by Demi Vance. McGuinness holds it up, plays it back to Vance. Knocks it into the body of Schichtel. Claims handball. Gets the decision. Free kick for Northern Ireland. Good defending from, from Demi Vance. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Vance in the Norway game and tonight with her dribbling ability. You know, she's a strong dribbler on the ball. I'd like to actually see her do that more. You know, try and get it out to here to where McGuinness is and where Vance is. She's got a wand of a left foot on her. But yeah, her dribbling is so powerful when she gets on the ball. Can they use that more? Northern Ireland have possession inside their own half. While they have the ball, gives them a chance to take a bit of a breather as well. One day's less rest than Austria going into this game. They've been doing a lot of chasing in the first half as well. Julie Nelson with a longer ball down the right, headed away by Hanshaw. Here's Feiertzinger in the white boots, playing it back to Venninger. Venninger's first time ball to Georgi Eva. Callahan's interested, goes chasing. Zinsberger, the goalkeeper with her right foot, plays it up the pitch to Puntigam. Puntigam back to Georgi Eva. Little drop of the shoulder. Goes past Lauren Way. Down the line from Hanshaw. Stabbed in field by Dunst. Good build up from Austria. Julie Nelson in with an important challenge. Scoop pass from Dunst down the left hand side. Chased by Feiersinger. McFadden's across, clears with her right foot. And it goes out for a throw in to Austria. And Stephen actually will know this, just talking half time confectionery. If you do a game with, with the Ulster lot, Joel Tagger has an unbelievably sweet tooth never short of a sweet there Zadrazil's cross from the byline shanks it behind for the goal kick yeah Joel would have all sorts of chocolate oh, crisps always. coke full fat coke everything it's why you don't even to finish the lot you don't have to take your own supplies to the game because there's always a massive tin there we've got our listeners from Ulster with us this afternoon uh, for the game great to have you along we're live on five live in BBC sounds we've got England Norway on the way for you tonight kicking off at eight o'clock uh, this evening, the two teams that started this group, both with wins last week. Bouncing ball inside the Northern Ireland half. Rebecca Holloway just about deals with it, gets it back to McFadden. Dangerous clearance across the face of her area. Dunst nearly intercepted it. McKenna sweeps it downfield with her right foot. That's blocked and it goes behind for another Northern Ireland goal kick. So we've played 12 minutes second half. Austria still leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. Yeah. They're a little bit stuck at the minute, Northern Ireland, because they haven't really made any kind of impact in the second half with regards crosses into the box or shots on target or even looking threatening like they can get a goal. So, you know, I, I can see Kenny Shields and his son Dean talking on the far side. I just would like to know what's going through their mind because surely they can see what we can see. They're going to have to be proactive from the side and try and bring some freshness, energy or quality onto the pitch. Julie Nelson, good ball down the right-hand side. Well controlled by Callahan. played into midfield. McCarran tries to keep it moving for Northern Ireland. Rachel Furness in the bright orange boots, drills it out to the left. Demi Vance does pretty well, actually, to keep that in play. Eventually wins a throw. Unfortunately, the pass just behind Vance from Furness, which slightly interrupted the momentum. But Vance now stealing a few yards down the left-hand touchline, holding the ball above her head, throws it to Furness, side puts it back to her, Vance down the line. Knocks it straight out of play, throwing for Austria on the right-hand side. Furness, Vance, Rebecca Holloway all in conversation there about what happened in that last couple of minutes of play. They are an extremely tight-knit group, this Northern Ireland squad. And uh, they have done, as we have said, fantastically well to get themselves to Euro 2022. Right in this game as well. Villa jumps to try and win a header for Austria, goes over her head. McFadden comes back to a goalkeeper, Jackie Burns. So we'll have to wait and see what changes Kenny Shields is going to make in this second half. Chipped out of the penalty area by McFadden. Zadrazil intercepts. Ball breaks for Fire Singer. Turns 35 yards from goal. Out it goes to Hicklesberger Fuller. Challenge on her from Holloway. There was a scream from Hicklesberger Fuller there, but assistant referee and referee had a good view of the challenge. And 
No free kick given, and Hipplesberger full is absolutely fine. McFadden's got to be careful inside her own box. Plays it across to Julie Nelson, getting closed down by Dunst. Dunst makes the tackle, and behind it goes for a goal kick, Natasha Dowie. Yeah, it might sound like a bit of a stuck record, but I think you're know, having a bit of a soft spot for Northern Ireland. I'm watching them, and I'm thinking, OK, what's been said at half-time? What's changed? I'm trying to look at different formations, different movements, different tactics. Nothing's changed. They're still playing themselves under pressure. The one time they do go long into channels, they get an opportunity higher up the pitch, but then they haven't done it again for the last five minutes. So that's the most frustrating thing for me, is if they lose this game tonight, I feel like they haven't played to their strength now for two games. And I think as, as a coach and as a player myself, that's why I'm finding frustrating watching this Northern Ireland team. I think they'll have sorry, more regrets about losing tonight than what they did against Norway. Because I think this game is there for the taking. It, it, it's there for them to grab it with the scruff of the neck and change it. Against Norway, they were three behind and it was very difficult after that. But I think there's a real opportunity to make an impression in this game tonight, and they're not doing it. They've got half an hour to do it now, Northern Ireland. Kenny Shields is trying to get that message across from the sideline at the moment. Zinsberger, the Austrian keeper, under a bit of pressure, clears with a right foot, intercepted by Rebecca Holloway. Lobs one down the line for Demi Vance. Vance chips it into the box. Awkward one for Callahan to control. Two defenders on her back. Georgieva takes it off her. Bit of skill down by the byline. Clears it with her right foot out for a throw in to Northern Ireland on the left. Austria one, Northern Ireland uh, nil. I know I've said it before, and we spoke about it in the first half. For me, change Furness. You know, change Callahan. Callahan had such a good impact against Norway in that midfield. She's that leader. She's that captain. Furness is good in the air. Get the ball out wide. It's simple. Get balls into the box. Get her on the end of them. Let's start creating and working this keeper. Throw in from Rebecca Holloway. McGuinness controlled. She was tackled. Another throw in for Northern Ireland. So a little bit of pressure building. Can they turn it into something meaningful? Throw in. Comes back to Sarah McFadden. Northern Ireland playing to their own half. Julie Nelson's quickly closed down. Here's Chloe McCarran. McCarran with her right foot sees space on the right-hand side and finds Rebecca McKenna. Quick pass forward here to Marissa Callahan. Georgieva sticks with her. Callahan tries to win the ball back off her, gets the challenge in, but the last touch comes off Callaghan and goes behind uh, for a goal kick to Austria. And that decision roundly booed uh, by the green and white army. So if Austria win this game, then England know a win for them tonight against Norway. England would win the group and Northern Ireland would actually be out of the competition ahead of the game against England here uh, on Friday night. If Austria win this game and Norway win, that is what Northern Ireland uh, will want. It gives them a, a, an outside sliver of a, of a chance going into the final game. Zadrazil almost runs into trouble here. McGuinness and Furness trying to take it off her. Puntigam now under pressure from McCarran, higher up the pitch, Northern Ireland. Austria give the ball away, McKenna couldn't find Lauren Wade there. Georgieva thought about the back pass to Zinsberger, Callahan's there to cut that off. So they come to the left instead, Hanshaw, pass forward intercepted by Chloe McCarran. Ball comes off her right boot, bounces deep in the left back position for Austria. Georgieva looks very comfortable on the ball back there, clears with her left foot, takes the deflection out for a throw in to Northern Ireland. Stephen? It's just too often Northern Ireland missed the first pass. The first simple pass when possession's turned over, can you link the first pass? Can you link the second pass? And by the time you get to the third one, that usually means you're in control of the ball. But too often tonight, whether it's just fatigue, whether it's tiredness, but they've missed the first pass too often. Or Marissa Callaghan's had a poor touch after the third pass. So it's all about just linking your play together. They probably haven't done that often enough. Not really got going uh, the second half. Austria won't mind that so much because they're leading by a goal to nil, but I'm sure they'd love a two-goal cushion, but it's Northern Ireland who've got to try and make it happen. Now, ball down the right for Hicklesberger Fuller, if she can keep it in. Rebecca Holloway comes steaming in to win the tackle, knocks it out for a throw. Hicklesberger Fuller takes that quickly. Zadrazil chests it down. Back to Schichtel, the goal scorer, in towards Villa with the cross. Julie Nelson up behind her to win the header. Dunst hits it on the half volley, all through Burns' hands and over the crossbar. And Northern Ireland's goalkeeper breathes a huge sigh of relief. That was real skill from Barbara Dunst to bring it down and hit it first time on the half volley. 
through the goalkeeper's hand. She's just lucky, Tash, it didn't go through and end up in the back of the net. Yeah, and she loves this fixture as well. I think five, she's been involved in five goals. I think she scored three and had two assists against Northern Ireland. So she loves this fixture and really unlucky there. Poor goalkeeping, needs to concentrate a bit more, but great strike, great technique. Technique, yeah. superb. I think Jackie Burns was already thinking of the next move. I'll catch this and I'll throw it out. And just a little warning sound of football. Deal with what's ahead of you, then make your next move. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Here on 5 Live, BBC Sounds and BBC Radio Ulster this afternoon. England, Norway to come tonight. Kicks off at 8 o'clock. Our commentary tomorrow night on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Germany against Spain. Robin Cowan alongside Tash Dowie here. Again, should be another tracker in this tournament. Corner comes into the near post. And Venninger goes for the header. Goes down holding her face for a second there. I thought she managed to get that header on target. Dunst then tries to get across in that block. Northern Ireland player now down injured. Sarah McFadden's hauled to her feet. Marissa Callahan is tying her shoelaces. Bodies everywhere inside the Northern Ireland penalty area. And probably just watching the replay here, some important defending done at the near post because as Vinegar was going for that header, it's McFadden who's in there, gets her body in the way. I think it possibly comes off her shoulder or just probably even the back of her head. But there's a few weary bodies. You can see now when the bodies go down, you know, they're having to get a teammate to pull them up or someone to get them up off their feet. Just when Northern Ireland need that little bit of extra impetus and energy in the team, they're starting to look a little bit weary. And the problem is right now, especially with losing the likes of McGill, who have they got on the bench to bring on with experience, with that know-how in these major tournaments, in these big games? They haven't really got that. Yes, they've got young kids who can run around and work hard for you, but that's probably the big difference right now with this Northern Ireland team and maybe your Austria teams and England and Norway. They've got you know, superstars sitting on the bench that can come on and really have an impact in games. But that's probably the next stage for Northern Ireland then is to kind of beef out the squad a little bit, to have a little bit more depth and hopefully this tournament will for the likes of uh, Emily Wilson and uh, Louise McDaniel, you know, hopefully that will just broaden it out a little bit. And also, Stephen, further down the line, as we've been discussing throughout this tournament for Northern Ireland, watching these women play for their country, you know, I'm talking about going back to the grassroots and just bring more and more players through all the time for Northern Ireland. That, you know, that, that is part of what this, this tournament is about for them. 25 minutes to play. They're not bothered about that right now, though. They need to get back in the game first, though. Corner to defend. Barbara Dunst takes it for Austria. Good delivery with the right foot. Drops down. Fire single with the left foot. Leaping block and a really good one from Rebecca Holloway. Works out well for Northern Ireland. Lauren Wade's got the pace down the right-hand side. Zadrazil comes across to try and cover. Lauren Wade's past her. McGuinness is waiting in the middle. If she can get a ball in there. Red shirt's back in numbers. Wade can't find McCarron. Northern Ireland have got to be careful about the Austrian counter now. Biller tackled by McFadden. Fabulous defending by Sarah McFadden. Runs into another challenge. Hanshaw heads the ball forward for Austria. Zadrazil knocks it back to Barbara Dunst. Kirsty McGuinness in quickly for Northern Ireland to win it. And here's Julie Nelson. Thought about going long into the Austrian half. Holds onto it. Down the line she plays it. Lauren Wade tries to take it on the turn. First touch gets away from her. Georgieva plays it forward. Northern Ireland have it again inside their own half. I think that's my, my biggest frustration with Lauren Wade is that she's so excited when she's on the ball. You can hear the crowd get lifted when she's on it. She's so fast, so direct. Take her down the line. Don't cut back into bodies. Defenders love that. Their job's done. Have a bit more confidence in yourself to go, go alone. Great ball from Rachel Furness into Marissa Callahan. Demi Vance making the run into the penalty area. Callahan turns, plays it back to Kirsty McGuinness. Edge of the box, something developing here for Northern Ireland. Kirsty McGuinness with the cross into the six-yard box. Good defending, and behind it goes for a corner from Georgieva. I think it was Hanshaw in there, right in the middle of her six-yard box, who made a crucial block for Austria. Yeah, you know, we're talking earlier about Lauren Wade coming off the side. You've got to get across the first defender. If she's proactive and she's instinctive, if she's on the front foot, she gets across and nicks the ball into the box. But excellent play from Kirsty McGuinness. It's taken, what, almost 70 minutes for her to do that. Most promising moment, definitely, so far for Northern Ireland. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Just over 22, 23 minutes to play. Austria now have all 11 players out there. Venninger is back on the field. Demi Vance with a deep corner to the far post. Furness leapt to try and win the header. It glances off her forehead, comes to McCarran. McCarran lofts it high, back into the box. Furness up again, looping header, just lands on the roof of the net. Zinsberger wasn't quite sure there for a second, sort of scampered underneath her crossbar just to check the trajectory wasn't going to drop in underneath. 
better from Northern Ireland. Yeah, much better. Great spell. And I think going back to that chance there by Northern Ireland, that's where they really miss Simone McGill. An out-and-out -out goal scorer. You know, that's a striker's dream. You've got to get across that, across that defender there. So they really miss her. But really good spell. Can they keep this up now and get a goal? Some real energy about to come onto the field for Northern Ireland. If Thursday night's performance, anything to go by Abby McGee. Ready to come on. That'll be the first change for Kenny Shields. Northern Ireland winning a few of the important challenges now. Here they come again down the left. Demi Vance brings it forward. Early ball's just too close to Zinsberger. Nice idea. Lauren Way was on the run. Just needed to be curling a bit further away from the goalkeeper that to try and make it into a little 50-50. Just over 20 minutes to play. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. A result which would send Northern Ireland out tonight if England win or if England and Norway draw. Not necessarily if Norway win the game this evening. 8 o'clock tonight, full commentary here on 5 Live and the BBC Sounds app if you're on the move. Zinsberger long clearance, Julie Nelson turns, gets there first. First time ball back to a goalkeeper, Jackie Byrne, stroked out with her left foot to McFadden. McFadden back to Nelson in the right back position. Low pass, good pass up towards Wade, good first touch, turns. Plays it forward to Callahan. Good from Northern Ireland. Kirsty McGuinness is there. Demi Vance acres of space wide on the left-hand side. McGuinness, though, crosses in and straight into the arms of Zinsberger. Easy catch for the Austrian keeper. I think she should have made another pass out towards Demi Vance because it then would have allowed the midfield players and Lauren Wade to fill the box a little bit better. Because she took the cross on early, they were still trying to get themselves into the box. But the game's opened up. There's a lot more space for Northern Ireland to play in. Make that first and second pass and you can play through this Austrian team. I definitely take it back as well about what I said about having no one to come off the bench and impact the game. <laughs> Completely forgot about Abby McGee, my player to watch in this Northern Ireland game. Devastated that she didn't start the game. She can really come on these last 20 minutes and have an impact. If you've not seen her play, uh, we'll, we'll see a little bit of her this afternoon. Uh, Friday night, I'm sure she'll start uh, against England. That game will be on BBC One. Stephen Cragen will be here doing the commentary on Five Live. And you can listen to that commentary and get the pictures via the iPlayer and the BBC Sport website. And I'll remind you again about the other major sporting events starting on Thursday this week. The 150th Open Championship at St Andrews. Back at St Andrews uh, for the first time in, in seven years. Uh, extensive coverage commentary across the four days and a preview programme on its way for you on Wednesday night. Breaking play now here at uh, St Mary's Stadium. 20 minutes left in the game. We've got another cooling break as the players take the fluids uh, on board. Last chance here for Kenny Shields to get them all together. And noticeably, they have all gone over as a team to have a chat to the coach. Four or five of the Austrian players have actually stayed on this side of the field. And a, a, a failed mini attempt at getting a Mexican wave going, I see, down below us. Too, too hot for that, I think. No one could be bothered to get up uh, out of their seats. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0, and I'm sure... I'm sure Stephen Tash, Kenny Shields will, will be impressing upon them as we've been saying second up. Th this is your chance. There's 20 minutes here. You've got you've got to go and seize it now. Yeah, it's do or die now. You've got 20 minutes, otherwise you're out of the tournament. So you know you'll probably see them go even more direct. Try and get bodies into the box. Like we've said, play to their strengths. Get the ball out wide. Get deliveries into the box. You've got nothing to lose now. So don't have any regrets. You know they're history makers right now. They, they've They've already created history, but go away with no regrets because they're lucky enough to be out there. They're the ones that has to change this game now. So Abby McGee on. I'm guessing Rebecca McKenna came off. I didn't actually see the number go up, but I can't see her back out there. So I think that's right. And it is, yeah. yeah, and Austria uh, making a change here. Julia Hickelsberger Fuller uh, is coming off. And I think that's Katerina Nashenveng, who started the game against England, uh, who is coming on. Plays her club football for Hoffenheim. She caught the eye, actually, I thought, Stephen, in that game against England. But I guess good rotation of the, of the Austrian squad yeah, well, by the coach. I think she'd done a good defensive job and tracked back and, you know, done the hard yards. Whereas I think Picklesberger, Fuller, when she came on, was a bit more flamboyant. So maybe that tells us where Austria see the game. Maybe just to solidify and make sure that they don't give anything away. 17 minutes to play. Austria 1, Northern Ireland 0. Can Northern Ireland find themselves an equaliser and give the Green and White Army something else to sing about during this fabulous Euro 2022? Trying to play it down the left. Holloway's pass intercepted. Puntigan 
sure-footed pass here to Dunst, who's now on the right-hand side. High floated cross, easy for Jackie Burns to come and get it. So Naschenweng now wide on the left where Dunst was, and Dunst uh, here uh, on the right, who is one of the most improved players uh, in this Austrian team. Jackie Burns, Northern Ireland's keeper, is going to go long with her left foot. Launches it high. Schichtel's probably the tallest player on the field. Wins the header up against Vance. The ball drops inside the Northern Ireland half. Holloway had to deal with it. Comes off her shins and goes out for a throw into Austria uh, on the right. They are managing the game at the moment. I also think as a manager, if you bring on a couple of forward players, that sends a message to the players on the pitch. Listen, we're going for this. And it, it almost gives you a little bit of belief that you can throw yourself forward. You can run forward that little bit harder. So... I'm thinking to Kenny, come on, let's see if you can get something in from a forward perspective or even a midfield player. Long throw coming into the Northern Ireland penalty area from Katarina Schichtel, scorer of the only goal so far this afternoon. Headed forward by Puntigam after the initial Northern Ireland clearance. Chloe McCarran tries to tow the ball away. Here's Naschenveng stepping onto her left foot. Fancies the shot, low drive, straight at Jackie Burns, easy save. You know what, you, you sit here as well, 1 0, 15 minutes to go. One player out there for Northern Ireland is a professional football player who plays in a professional league. You know, the, Austra the Austria players, they're in that pro environment day in, day out. So you've got to give massive credit to Northern Ireland right now to st still be in this game with 15 minutes to go. Yeah, very good point. Tash Dowie, former England international, with us here at St Mary's this afternoon. Zadra Zil's caught by Demi Vance. Free kick for Austria. Little bit of skill dropped inside. Zadrazil quickly on her feet, takes the free kick quickly as well. Dunst goes for that swinging cross to the far post. Looping header drops down and wide from Naschenveng and goes behind for the goal kick to Northern Ireland, Stephen. It's just a little bit more urgency now, isn't it? But then, you know, the players, 75 minutes, very warm conditions in the first half. Do they have anything left in the tank? You know, do they have one last push and effort to try and get the goal? I mean, if you could score in the next five, six minutes, it's incredible how suddenly you get that lifeline, you get that boost that could potentially see them go on and win in the game. But the goal looks a long way away from me at this moment in time. Very similar attendance figure to the one we had on Thursday, just under 10,000 inside St Mary's Stadium. Full house when England are here Friday night, England against Northern Ireland. Don't miss that one in full on BBC Radio 5 Live. England at the Amex tonight against Norway. Full commentary on the way. Furness with the left-footed ball. McGuinness knocked off balance by Schichtel. Doesn't get the decision. Venninger for Austria into the last 15 minutes of the game. Austria leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. Georgi Eva bringing the ball out from the back. Puts Venninger under a little bit of pressure. Bobbly pass from her back to Georgi Eva. Good movement. Takes her away from McCarran. Now sweeps a pass out to the left-hand side. Here's Nash and Veng. Fire Singer wants it early. Into the box it comes. McFadden heads it away for Northern Ireland. Played back into midfield. McCarran. Sliding challenge on her from Nicole Biller. Biller in with another tackle. Northern Ireland have lost out here. Zadrazil, the Bayern Munich playmaker, on the edge of the box to Firesinger. Firesinger, two white shirts in front of her for Northern Ireland. Nash and Veng with the cross into the near post. Biller tries to get the flick round the corner and behind it goes for a, uh, a corner to Austria. Yeah, it's great to see as well with Austria. They've been here, they've done it. They made the semi-final the last Euros. They're so calm. 1-0, could be edgy, but none of them look like they're panicking. They keep doing what they're doing. They're creating chances. They're confident they're going to get another goal. Corner for Austria. They come in from the left. Referee Barrera has spotted something she didn't like. So shrill blast on the whistle and a wag of the finger. Staring intently at all the bodies around the edge of the six-yard box. Corner is driven in from the left. Header away from Rachel Furness. Biller chases back for Austria, McGuinness in with the challenge. Holloway goes in to help out, wins it for Northern Ireland. Plays it back to Demi Vance and time is running out here for Kenny Shields' team. Jackie Burns side foots it to Sarah McFadden. McFadden across to Vance. Vance comes running forward inside her own half, plays it to McCarran. McCarran back to McFadden, cross to Vance. Northern Ireland just being penned in. Vance can't see a way out here. Tries to play one down the line. Easily intercepted by Puntigan. Plays it wide to Dunst. Dunst, right-footed cross, just hits Burns on the shin. Slight miscommunication between McFadden and Burns. Could have gone anywhere. Northern Ireland have it now and suddenly able to get on the front foot. Lauren Wade in space on the right. Marissa Callahan didn't play the pass in time. Fire Singer back on the ball for Austria on the halfway line. Here's Puntigan, brings it forward. Austria leading 1-0. Biller makes the run. Puntigan... 
floats it to the left. That's going to be a hard chase for Zadrazil. Won't get there, behind it goes for the goal kick to Northern Ireland. That's frustrating for me there as well, the captain, Callahan, because she's not a dribbler, she's a ball player. She's someone that's good on the ball, has that range of pass. So why is she trying to dribble and take someone on the halfway line and then turns the ball over? She knows way to pace. Get her in behind, release the ball early, play to your strengths. You've got 10 minutes now, okay? Players are going to be tiring. That's when your decision-making has to be even better. Play to each other's strengths. Last 10 minutes, make the correct decisions, even when you're tired. Northern Ireland throwing some fresh legs into the action. 20-year-old Jolie Andrews is on. Rachel Furness comes off. Kirsty McGuinness uh, comes off in the second change. I think it's Emily Wilson. Emily Wilson, thank you, Stephen. Stephen Cragen and Tash Dowie with us here. Closing stages of Austria and Northern Ireland. Still 1-0. Still Schichtel's goal separating the two teams. Bit of pace out there for Northern Ireland. Can they convert it into a meaningful opportunity? Can they test Zinsberg? Even if they do, she's one of the best goalkeepers in the world. So it's going to have to be something special to try and beat her. Austria have it. Schichtel plays back to Venninger. Puntigam chips it forward with her left foot. Fire Singer in a bit of space. Corner of the Northern Ireland box. Low cross comes in. Good stretch from McFadden to intercept it. Holloway clears with her left foot. Tired looking legs uh, out there amongst both sets of players. Again, the Mexican wave is just trying to get started, isn't it? It's trying to get started. How often have you said tonight about Sarah McFadden? Her interceptions, yeah. her understanding of the game, her reading of the game. She's a real warrior, but what I have to say tonight, her positioning as a middle central defender tonight has been absolutely spot on. 35 years old, winning her 88th cap this evening. Another go at the Mexican wave behind that goal to our right-hand side. Throw in towards the near post. Biller challenges for it. It's given us a corner because it's come off Demi Vance. Austria want to take it quickly. They're still not safe in the game. Leading by a goal to nil. Winning it clearly gives them a better chance of qualification for the knockout stages. Semi-finalists at Euro 2017. Were they to win it? They're on three. Norway and England both on three ahead of their game at the Amex this evening. Corner for Austria here into the last ten minutes. Leading Northern Ireland by a goal to nil. Dunst with the corner. Heads are up. Ball goes looping up in the air. Biller wins the next header. Demi Vance tries to head it away. Flicked away by McCarran. Austria have it wide on the left, midway inside the Northern Ireland half. Georgieva's good with the ball at her feet, the centre-back. Holds onto it here. Plays it back down the left-hand touchline. And Biller works it all the way back to Puntigam, the holding midfielder who keeps everything ticking along for Austria, and Zadrazil is there for her on her right. She comes back to her goalkeeper, Manuela Zinsberger. So Northern Ireland chasing hard, got to give it a go. Last 10 minutes of the game, need to try and find a goal. Got to get the ball off Austria first. Venninger to Zadrazil, inside her own half. Pass forward, clever turn from Dunst to get away from Vance. Nash and Veng in the middle, tries to get the cross into her block by Holloway. Behind for another Austria corner, Stephen Craig. She's a good player, isn't she, Dunst? She uses her body really well. I mean, Demi Vance ploughed into the back of her, but she was still able to hold her ground, spin out. She's nice on the left, she's good on the right. She's certainly been one that's caught the eye tonight, and I thought even against England uh, last Wednesday night, I thought she was impressive. Lone Gull comes swooping in to the stadium underneath the roof in front of us, just having an eye on things as we wait for another Austria corner. Dunst gets ready to take it, eight minutes to play with her right foot into the near post area, headed across the face of goal, drops, edge of the box, Chloe McCarran clears with her right foot. Lovely first touch there from Emily Wilson. Dribbles into trouble though, has given it away. Here's Puntigan. Can Austria find the second to kill the game? Dunn's going to hit one with her left foot, takes a deflection, bounces into the arms of Jackie Burns. Something's got to change now, so there's seven minutes left. They've still got a back five. So then, for instance, when it's gone up to the centre four, they're great hold-up play but then no one to play off to, no one to set, and then we haven't got runners in behind. Northern Ireland, they have to get bodies forward now. There has to either be more commitment or a change of formation to get bodies higher up the pitch. Abby McGee gets on the ball properly for the first time, tries to get her pass down the right. Hand short, too clever, reads it, gets it forward quickly to Nicole Biller offside. Stephen Cragen already waving the flag before it went up from the assistant referee. I just wonder whether you even look at putting Sarah McFadden as a centre forward. You know, just because she's probably the tallest, she's made quite aggressive, she's good in the air, and just be a little bit more industrial with your play rather than trying to play through. 
If you're chasing the game, you're 1-0 down, you go out of the competition almost, you would think, as it stands. I know the results will have to change, but it will have to be very dramatic, I think, yeah. for Northern Ireland. So, can you do something different rather than all this passing football? Be direct. Yeah, if, if Northern Ireland lose the game, they need Norway to win tonight, and they need to beat England and hope Norway beat Austria. So, that's a lot that would need to happen at the moment. They've got more defending to do. Nashenbeng tackled by Julie Nelson. Jolie Andrews back there. Big clearance with her right foot over the head of Lauren Wade. It's just fizzling out a bit for, for Northern Ireland as they get ready to make another double change. Kirsty McGuinness's sister, Caitlin, is one of those I recognise on the far side of the field getting ready to come on. Just having a look to see who the other is. I think that's Louise McDaniel, number 18, who's also getting ready to come on for Northern Ireland. So late changes, unsurprising, difficult conditions. Nicole Biller couldn't get herself on the score sheet for Austria there. Loyal following in the red and white. Cheers her from the field. So it's Lisa Macas who comes on, 30-year-old, who actually scored for Austria against France at Euro 2017. Caitlin McGuinness is on for Marissa Callahan for Northern Ireland, and Julie Nelson uh, comes off to be replaced by Louise McDaniel. Late changes in the game. Six minutes to play. Austria won Northern Ireland nil. Coming up towards quarter to seven. Uh, Post-match reaction after the game. If we're away from here quickly, Daily Euros podcast is the place to get that. Available for you every day of the tournament uh, on the BBC Sounds app. Reporters inside the England and Northern Ireland camps. All the best reaction analysis debate there for you. So there'll be plenty off the back of the England-Norway game tonight as well. Cleared by Abby McGee with her right foot. Austria got Northern Ireland exactly where they want them, penning them back inside their own half. Hanshaw with the throw. Here's Fire Singer in the middle of the Northern Ireland half. Cross here to Dunst. Dunst has the Northern Ireland defenders back pedaling onto her right foot. Hits the shot. Well blocked. Back to Fire Singer. Good right foot drive just over the bar and behind for a goal kick. Yeah, Northern Ireland now changing their back four because Julie Nelson's gone off. May just give the Austrians a little bit more space with Northern Ireland gambling and players you know, becoming a little bit disjointed and ragged then it, it, it could create opportunities for the opposition but Northern Ireland had to try and do something radical and Kenny Shields has eventually changed their back four four minutes plus added time remaining for Northern Ireland to try and find a crucial goal which really will change the face uh, of the group Nash and Beng trying to play it up the middle to Makas Makas with the foul there, though, so Northern Ireland get the free kick. McFadden wanted to take it quickly. In fact, Northern Ireland decide against that. Jackie Burns, goalkeeper, is way forward. They're going to go longer and try and put some pressure on the Austrian back line. Jackie Burns, 10 yards inside her own half. Northern Ireland fans, I'm sure you can hear them. Fantastic support, as ever, from the Green and White Army, as they're known. On their feet at the moment, urging their team to try and create a chance here. Burns' his ball forward, Puntagam wins the first header, Jolie Andrews jumps, Zadrazil with a measure past the Nash and Veng. Now can they get Macus away through the middle? Jackie Burns, mile off a line, Abby McGee is there to get an important touch on the ball. Burns clears with her left foot. Caitlin McGuinness heads it to her left-hand side, Emily Wilson's loft thick, concedes the... Hegerberg will start. Yes, very impressive here uh, on Thursday night in the win against Northern Ireland. Nash and Veng in behind Northern Ireland here looking for the second goal. Bursting through and finds it. Austria get the win. Brilliantly worked goal. Fabulous from Nash and Veng. Latched onto the diagonal. Brilliant first touch. Speed to get into the box and finds the finish to win the game. Austria 2, Northern Ireland 0. That was good football. Yeah, and you think over the piece, Austria have certainly deserved to win the game. Abby McGee just gets herself caught under the ball. It's a long diagonal ball. I think initially she thought she could win it. Nashen Veng just peeled off her, just allowed Abby McGee to miss the ball. It was a terrific first touch coming in on the left-hand angle of the box. And once she got in behind Abby McGee, Jackie Burns tried to close the angle down, but she just drilled the ball past her. 
into the bottom corner. Sherry McFadden tried to make the block. She couldn't do that. Sherry McFadden's certainly been through the hard yards, through the, uh, through the gears tonight. She couldn't make that tackle in. That's a tough end for Northern Ireland, but unfortunately, Austria have been better. Yeah, really uncharacteristical by Abby McGee. You know, she's normally known for her defending her one-on-one. -on -one. No one got past her against Norway, so she'll be devastated by that mistake. But you can't take away the finish. Really great strength, great power, great finish into the bottom corner. And Austria have, have played this game very well. You know, they really have 1-0, calm, collected, game over. And it's looking like maybe Northern Ireland's tournament's over. Big game for Austria then coming on Friday at the Amex uh, against Norway, putting themselves in with a chance of qualification, looking for a third late in this game. Northern Ireland, from their point of view now, need Norway to beat England tonight if they are going to have any chance at all of qualification uh, from this group. Caitlin McGuinness battling for the ball for Northern Ireland. We're in the 90th minute of the game. Bit of added time to be played. Ball down the left from Demi Vance. Emily Wilson's on side. White shirts to aim at in the box. She's overrun it down by the byline. And Georgieva is there in the red Austrian shirt to clear with her right foot and fire Zinger under pressure here. Loses it. Emily Wilson gets it back to Demi Vance. Vance's ball into the edge of the box. Couldn't be controlled there but Northern Ireland still have it. Here's Jolie Andrews, right-footed pass down the inside left channel up towards Holloway. Here's Wilson again. Wilson plays it back to Vance. Vance with the left-footed ball, edge of the box. Ball breaks loose here to Abby McGee. Abby McGee with a little right-footed pass. Gets it back from McDaniel. Lisa Macas is back there, the striker. Getting away from McGee across the halfway line, all on her own for Austria at the moment as she brings it forward. Austria leading by two goals to nil. Now the support from Hanshaw down the left-hand side. Wide on the left. Keeps that in play. Finds Firesinger. Austria really coming on strong in the closing stages here. McFadden follows Firesinger out into the right-back position. Now they're looking for Nash and Veng. Great challenge on her by McDaniel. And it's going end-to-end -end in the closing stages. Four minutes of added time, we're into them. Holloway goes sliding into a 50-50. Wins it against Zadrazil. Plays it to Jolie Andrews. Andrews can't find Caitlin McGuinness. And Schichtel intercepts for Austria. Puntigam plays it across to Hanshaw. Hanshaw wasn't quite sure she knew Lauren Wave was behind her there. Passes the ball straight out of play. Northern Ireland have a throw on the right. Uh, they've been beaten by the better team this afternoon, Stephen. They have been, listen... They knew it was going to be a tough ask to be competitive in this group. The fact that they've kept the game alive up until the 88th minute, just trailing by a single goal, shows again another little bit of progress. Of course, the technical side of the game and the tactical side of the game they'll continually have to get better at, but you, know, you certainly can't break their spirit. Even going 2-0 down, they're still chasing, they're still running forward. So, yeah, it's been a good experience being around the competition, but unfortunately, I've came up short. Austria 2, Northern Ireland 0. England no going into the Norway game this evening. We just heard from Vicky Sparks, England unchanged. If they win that game against Norway tonight, uh, they are through and they go through as group winners, regardless of what happens on Friday night here uh, against Northern Ireland. So a real uh, added motivation for Serena Wiegmann and her team this evening. Demi Vance on the ball inside her own half. Two and a half minutes to play. Austria leading Northern Ireland by two goals to nil. Pass through the middle for Makas. Austrian players run into each other. Feiertinger plays it to Puntigam. Chance for three, shot deflected, great defending. And it goes behind for the corner, Natasha Dowie. Yeah, well, that's more. That's what she's more about, Abby McGee. That's what, no, oh, sorry, it's even Holloway, sorry. Great tackle by Holloway. You think they've wrapped the game up 3-0, but that's brilliant defending. And like what you just said then about the team spirit, the never die attitude. 2-0 down, game over, but they're still throwing bodies. And that's why you can't fault Northern Ireland. That's why everyone loves them and they have the supporters here tonight. And that's why I think, regardless of how they do in this tournament, they can walk away with their head held high because attitude-wise, it's been perfect. Given it absolutely everything again, we're just watching a slow-motion replay of the second goal uh, from Naschenbeng. That real burst of pace to take her past McFadden. Clinical finish, corner in, great claim from Jackie Burns under pressure. Catches it with both hands, slings it out with her left arm. Looking to get McDaniel away for Northern Ireland. Georgieva does a good job for Austria, wins it, holds her off. Austria come looking for the third again, deep in added time. Here's Naschenven. Naschenven plays it to Makas on the left-hand side. Makas with the deep cross, headed away by Holloway. Drops on the edge of the Northern Ireland box. McFadden plays it forward. Jolie Andrews is stretching. Zatrazil is there first for Austria. Last minute of the game. 
Austria leading 2-0. Deep cross of the far post. Burns punches it. Only as far here as Firesinger. Firesinger has time to make a choice, drives it high. Straight at Jackie Burns, makes the save. And Austria's lead remains 2-0. Yeah, you can't help but think Jackie Burns, who is without a club, that someone will take a little gamble or take a risk on Jackie Burns. I just think she's got all the, the technical abilities you want as a goalkeeper. She's very good with her hands, makes good saves, but ultimately how the game, the modern game is played nowadays, they want goalkeepers who can handle the ball at their feet. I don't mean handle, that's, not, that's probably not the right word, but deal with the ball at her feet, and certainly she can do that. Ten seconds to play according to my stopwatch. Austrian fans singing their songs of victory and celebration. Northern Ireland fans still making a heck of a racket in supporting their team. And there it is, the full-time whistle blows. Austria too good for Northern Ireland. Austria still right in the running for qualification from this group. Looks very, very difficult for Northern Ireland now. A second defeat in two games, just didn't have enough in the boiling heat in Southampton. Schicksal with the goal in the 20th minute for Austria and the late second from Katarina Naschenbeng uh, to give Austria the win. Stephen Cragen, valiant effort from Northern Ireland. Again, just gave it a go a little bit too late, but Austria had the quality, didn't they?